uh, his main field of research uh, his main field of research includes uh, population geography. Under population geography, he he deals with uh, other sub areas like uh, ethno ethnogeography, uh, geography of religion, settlement geography, migration studies, cartography, ethnocartography, ethnology, anthropology, uh, historical geography, cultural geography, political geography, and tourism. Uh, to, uh, Dr. Dorin completed his doctor, uh, his PhD, as we say, call it, uh, uh, from Alexandra Ion Cusa University of Yes, Romania. And uh, he also holds a degree in Arctic studies from University of Lapland Arctic Center, Finland. He is also a licensed uh, in, uh, in our area, uh, it is equivalent to a Bachelor of Arts and Masters. Okay, so he is a licensed uh, from the Faculty of Geography and Geology, and specializes in human geography and tourism, also from uh, Alexandra Ion Cusa University of Yes, Romania. Our speaker also has had a distinguished career uh, as uh, holding research positions in different universities and institutions of the world, especially in the European region. Uh, to talk about a brief summary of his research positions that he has had held in the past. Uh, from 1998 to 2000, year 2000, he was a research engineer in the Institute of Geography, Academy of Sciences, Moldova. From 2001 to 2004, uh, he was a junior researcher in the National Museum of Ethnography and Natural History, that too in Moldova. From 2010 to 2013, he completed postdoctoral research from the Alexandra Ion Cusa University of Yes, Romania. And from 2014 to till date, as of now, he is a senior researcher. And later on, he is promoted as leading researcher. And now he is a leading researcher in the Institute of Ecology and Geography, Academy of Sciences of Moldova. And he is still holding that position as leading researcher. He also, his academic profile also is also replete with many achievements, especially in the field of teaching. And he also has a vast teaching experience. For example, he was, he worked as a lecturer and later on senior lecturer in Tiraspol State University from, 2000, from the year 2004 to 2008. Uh, from 2005 to 10, he worked as lecturer and later on as senior lecturer in the Moldova State University under the Department of History and Philosophy. Similarly, from 2015 to 2019, he worked as associate professor uh, in the University of the Academy of Sciences of Moldova. And from 2017 to 2019, he worked as associate professor in another university of the State University, Tiraspol. He worked as associate professor in the Department of Geography. Sir has also worked as a visiting researcher in many of the research, premier research institutes of the world. Uh, to name few of them, uh, he has he was a he was a leading research on he was a leading researcher in the Institute of East and as Southeast European Studies Austria in the year 2001. In the year 2005, uh, he worked as a researcher in University of La La Spangia in the Institute of East European Studies and Department of Human Geography, Rome, Italy. Similarly, in the year 2017, he was a visiting researcher in the IBINGE Institute for East and Southeast European Studies. In the year 2018, Sir has worked as a visiting researcher in the University of Copenhagen, Denmark Department of Geography and Linguistics, and in the year 2020, he, he was a, a fellow researcher 
in the Eibens Institute of Regional Geography, Germany for five months. In his glorious academic achievement consists of many, uh, attendee consists of many awards also that he has been, he has received. For uh, to name few, he, he was awarded with uh, he was awarded with a medal known as Yasser Gen Gons Helki, uh, which is one of the premier awards given by the government of Gagazusia, and he also received uh, another award in the same year for his excellence in research from the. Uh, University of Moldova. He also received Youngest Scientist of the Year in the year 2010. He also has received many honorary uh, diplomas from the Ministry of Culture of Moldova uh, in the year 2009 and 2011. He has also attended many scientific conferences and international conferences all over the world. He has participated with scientific communication with scientific community and to over and has attended over 130 conferences congresses symposiums seminars in Romania Moldova Ukraine Serbia Bulgaria Greece Croatia Austria Switzerland Germany Finland Sweden Netherlands Belgium Spain and Hungary Ireland and Iceland just to name few of them he has also worked as member of organizing committee or moderator at 14 conferences in Moldova, Romania, Serbia, Austria, Netherlands, Russia, Germany, and Malaysia. And one interesting uh, fact about our next speaker is that he is well versed in many languages of the world. For example, he is very fluent and he can speak multiple languages in that sense he can speak his native, that is native language, Romania. He is well versed in English, Russian, Italian, French, Spanish, Serbian, Croatian, and Bosnian language. He can speak Bulgarian, Czech language, Polish, German, Finnish, and Turkish. Well, this is the this is a short brief account of our next speaker, Dr. Loza Vanu Dorin. So, sir, I would like to welcome you uh, on behalf of our college and on behalf of every one of us here who are eagerly waiting for you to speak and enlighten us on the topic that you are going to talk about, that is resource ethics, a constant. Welcome, sir. And uh, now it's over to you, sir. Yes, thank you very much, uh, 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 Professor uh, Dinesh Radhikari, for so uh, uh, a long introduction and uh, uh, with many details uh, about my scientific uh, background and uh, about my my studies. Um, I am very uh, glad to be uh, in such a uh, conference. Um, it's uh, um, a honor for me also to, to be with you and would like to thank the uh, organizers. I would like to, to thank the uh, uh, Dr. Unish Suba for a kind invitation and uh, the, uh, taking care of uh, this event. Uh, I want to thank you uh, very much also uh, Dr. Tapas Pal uh, who is uh, always making uh, links around the, the world and uh, introduce uh, uh, so good uh, uh, cooperation and uh, new uh, relationship in uh, research fields uh, uh, between all our uh, countries and the uh, regions. Uh, I want to thank the, the uh, principal, the director of uh, the college, uh, uh, Shri uh, Bidan Supa and uh, uh, to greet all the colleagues, uh, Nicole Vasilkovsky, uh, a friend from a longer time, 
and uh, all the participants in uh, this uh, uh, event. It's an interesting and uh, general uh, topic, I think, which can be reflected and uh, uh, can be useful for any uh, scientific uh, fields. So uh, I uh, understand uh, why it was chosen this topic at the first stage. Uh, and uh, hopefully we will have the chance to cooperate also in the future. And uh, you have my invitation to visit uh, 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 my, uh, countries where I, I work and stay like Moldova, uh, like Romania, uh, or any other European countries around which we can organize some uh, uh, research and uh, uh, events. And uh, uh, Sikkim, it's, uh, uh, known, uh, it's, it's a known region by me from a, a long time as uh, with uh, his uh, particular uh, history. Yeah, uh, one of the, uh, actually the smallest state of India and uh, with the less population, but uh, uh, not mean with the less culture and the diversity and uh, uh, very rich uh, history. So I am very curious about uh, this uh, 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 region, about this state, and uh, we'll be glad to, to, to have cooperation in the future as well. So uh, should I... Uh, start uh, the presentation in the uh, topic, but also feel free to ask any other uh, uh, questions uh, related or less related with the, the subject, but of course related with the uh, research, with the science uh, and uh, uh, about our uh, uh, regions. Yeah, Mr. Dinesh, maybe uh, close the, the uh, microphone. Uh, I, I'm watching you speak, actually. I'm listening to you, sir. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, okay, so then I will try to As share you know, the... Know. It's... Uh, do, do you see? I think... Yes, sir, it's visible. Yes, sir. It's visible, yeah? Okay, yes, okay. Then uh, the techniques, you know, like not every time works uh, perfectly, but I hope uh, we will it's manage cool. in, uh, in uh, distance. We have these uh, good opportunities with the modern technologies to be very close <laughs> from uh, any, any part of the, the world. So the, the topic about uh, uh, research uh, ethics, it's of course a, a wide uh, subject, uh, which we can uh, discuss from uh, different perspectives. And I would like to uh, start with some introduction and the basic uh, things about, the, uh, about this uh, uh, subject. Um, Firstly, what uh, it's ethics, of course. We have here two key words, uh, research and uh, ethics. And uh, more or less, I think everybody uh, know about these uh, uh, concepts, about these fields, actually, of, of research or uh, branches of, uh, branch of philosophy, uh, which is called ethics, and which... Uh, in a very general uh, uh, definition uh, means moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conduct of an uh, activity of uh, the person, uh, but also the branch of knowledge uh, that deals with moral principles. Uh, Well-funded standards of right and wrong uh, that prescri prescribe uh, what humans are uh, should do usually in terms of, of rights, obligations, benefits to society, fairness, or specific uh, virtues. Uh, this branch of philosophy, uh, which was developed in uh, um, 
in a time from the uh, antiquity. Uh, it was in the uh, uh, in the vision of uh, all the philosophers, uh, so starting with Socrates or Aristotle or others from the ancient Greece. Also the philosophy of uh, ancient India or philosophy of ancient China, uh, everywhere the ethics was present, like uh, a special uh, uh, concern about uh, uh, the human uh, um, behavior. Uh, so uh, this was generally to answer the question uh, uh, with the respect of rightness and wrongness of certain action. And uh, of course, uh, to guide, uh, to, to guide the, the, the persons, the society to do the goodness uh, and to avoid the uh, badness in the, their everyday life and in the certain uh, actions and in certain uh, um, circumstances. Ethics is traditionally subdivided into normative ethics, uh, meta-ethics and applied ethics. We will, of course, uh, speak uh, today more about applied ethics, applied to the research. Uh, but to say that, uh, of course, the, the subject is very, um, very general. Um, and the, the word itself, uh, it uh, have origin from the ancient Greek, uh, from the uh, ethicos, uh, ethicos meaning relating to one's character. Uh, which come from the root of uh, ethos, uh, means character or moral nature. Uh, about the research, of course, it's also um, a quite general uh, uh, word and quite general uh, uh, meaning of, of this uh, process uh, of systematic inquiry that uh, entails a collection of data, documentation, or critical information, uh, analysis and interpretation of the data uh, and information um, using uh, specific methodologies and uh, uh, conducted by the professionals uh, in the uh, field of different uh, academical uh, uh, disciplines. Uh, the word itself, it's uh, in, the, in English, of course, uh, come from the Middle French, uh, from recherche, recherche, uh, which means to go about seeking, uh, uh, to, to seek something, so to, to, to search, uh, uh, finally, uh, with uh, the purpose to find uh, a truth, a truth and uh, an objective answer to any process or or phenomenon. Uh, of course, uh, we can define in the ethics uh, uh, also particularly uh, by branches of different uh, uh, scientific uh, disciplines, uh, beside the general philosophical uh, question. And uh, that, that uh, will uh, differ uh, from the uh, point of view and the background and purpose of uh, specific uh, disciplines. It can be medical ethics, you know, it can be economical, uh, ecological, uh, political, uh, uh, cultural, and uh, so on. And uh, sometimes uh, the different approaches from different disciplines can, can be uh, different in uh, concern of uh, uh, problems uh, related to uh, ethics. Mm. There are several reasons uh, why uh, research uh, should uh, adhere to the ethical principles. Firstly, uh, uh, the aim of research is uh, the knowledge and uh, to find the truth and uh, to avoid the errors. So, of course, the ethics is the part of this process. Uh, then uh, the research involves a great deal of cooperation and coordination among different people and uh, institutions. So uh, here it's also very important to respect the ethnic ethical 
principles uh, in uh, regard to the uh, relationship with the colleagues, in regard to the um, uh, rights, to the um, uh, sharing policies, uh, to the confidentiality, uh, and uh, generally to uh, conduct uh, specific uh, uh, research. Uh, there are many uh, ethical norms, uh, which I will try to present uh, the basic one, uh, or I think uh, the majority of them, which are generally acceptable. And uh, um, research ethics consists of, the, of a set of scientific norms developed over time and instant institutionalized in the international research community. So majority of them are generally and uh, uh, internationally accepted, uh, but of course uh, can be also national or regional reglementations in uh, some specific uh, aspects uh, about uh, research ethics. Uh, these norms dictate uh, scientific methods uh, should be used in a responsible uh, manner and uh, of course, the research is also regulated by the institutional uh, norms. Uh, there are common norms and there are uh, specific norms, like I uh, already told uh, about disciplines or about specific research and uh, specific uh, uh, topics. Um, ethical principles in uh, uh, research. Here are a series of scientists uh, from the philosophical background, but also from the scientific background who uh, defined uh, the, these ethical principles. One of the most prominent scholars is David Resnick from USA. And so uh, I adopted the, uh, the, these principles uh, based on, on their researches uh, conducted in the uh, ethic ethics in, in uh, research, ethics in science. So briefly, uh, these uh, principles include the honesty. Uh, it should be the, uh, in all scientific communication, uh, honestly report data, results, methods, uh, and publications, uh, which means to not fabricate, to not falsify, and uh, mispresent the data of research. Uh, objectivity. Uh, it should bias in uh, data avoid uh, bias in uh, data analysis, data interpretation, uh, peer review, uh, personal decisions, uh, uh, grant writing, uh, uh, and other aspects of uh, research. So we should uh, uh, look like researchers from all the points of view, uh, not to use the subjective point of view, which is uh, personal one or which uh, it's uh, just of the part of the subjects which we research. Uh, this is quite important, uh, especially in the social sciences, but also in natural and other sciences, because we should take in consideration also uh, the uh, research findings of the previous uh, uh, scientists and also to questioner all the parts of the specific uh, topic which we try to explain. Then uh, integrity, uh, it should be, of course, uh, act with the sincerity and uh, um, keep the promises in, in, uh, in that uh, uh, sense. Uh, carefulness, uh, it's important in science, like in every job, uh, actually, it's important to, to do this carefully, uh, uh, to not to avoid the errors and the negligence, because, you know, the errors in, uh, in science, uh, uh, it can be one number or it can be some sentences, uh, uh, which can uh, have even the tragical uh, consequences if we are not, uh, if we speak about physics, about chemistry, but but uh, uh, medicine, yeah, but any science as well, we should uh, be very careful and uh, analyze the data and uh, uh, have the, the um, 
the most correct uh, interpretation and the and the results. Openness uh, it's an important part of uh, ethics because our findings we should uh, share and uh, to be uh, open also for criticism uh, from the other scientists uh, because uh, it's a uh, uh, wh when it's a dispute, you know, uh, uh, we can find the uh, uh, quicker the truth because we are thinking about this. And if we put some questions, then we should give some uh, uh, um, correct answers. Uh, transparency, uh, there should be uh, uh, clear methods, materials, assumptions, analysis, and also other information which we used to to have this research. Uh, then we should have accountability. Uh, that means to explain uh, or uh, justify our uh, uh, research. Uh, we should respect the inte intellectual property. Uh, this is a, a very uh, uh, important part of the research ethics because uh, you know, uh, in the majority of the con of countries, this is also reglemented by the by the law uh, respecting the intellectual property and uh, not stealing uh, the the research uh, results and the data and the methods uh, or not publish without permission uh, uh, and uh, of course uh, respect all this. Uh, rights of intellectual property because like you know it's an immaterial uh, property in majority of cases so it's uh, people don't uh, think sometimes that they they steal this but it's the same like the the objects the material things that the intellectual things are can also be uh, misused and uh, uh, steal from from uh, the people who actually uh, own them. Uh, confidentiality, it's important when we do the research and uh, uh, when we have the, the uh, cooperation and communication with uh, persons, institutions, and uh, so on. Uh, then the responsible publication, responsible publication, it's uh, important to, to publish uh, uh, to be uh, uh, knowledgeable by uh, other scientists and public uh, at large, and uh, uh, not uh, uh, this is the way generally the science is uh, uh, making uh, their uh, results. Uh, also, responsible mentoring because uh, all the uh, professors, scientists who have already a status of uh, <clears throat> already a specialist uh, should also educate, mentor and advise uh, students, master students, PhD students uh, or other uh, young researchers. Mm -hmm. So they, this relationship uh, should be also uh, as correct as possible. Um, Respect for colleagues, uh, colleagues uh, in the same way. Social responsibility, uh, non-discrimination, and uh, competence uh, maintain and improve also our uh, competences because we are uh, learning all the life. Nobody is uh, nobody know everything. So uh, it's important to understand this and that we itself, we are performing uh, by every day and by every research we do. Uh, then uh, legality, we should uh, comply with the uh, relevant uh, law and uh, institutional and governmental policies. Um, then in the particular researchers, we also should care about animal care and uh, human uh, subject protection because uh, we, uh, different researchers in the fields like of life sciences, you know, or, or natural sciences and uh, medicine uh, involve uh, uh, sensible, yeah, sensible and uh, complicated uh, aspects, which 
have their specific ethics. You know the also bioethics, it's a separate discipline, uh, quite important and quite uh, um, with their reglementations. Uh, there are many also other activities that the law not obligatory define as misconduct, but uh, which are still regarded by most researchers as unethical. So um, I will not uh, uh, mention all of them because this depend also about uh, different opinions and about uh, different uh, aspects we can involve. But generally uh, there are different aspects which are not uh, uh, welcome to be used and uh, uh, should be also in according to ethics to be uh, avoid. For example, publishing the same paper in two different journals without telling the editors or the submit the same paper to different journals without uh, telling the editors, uh, not informing uh, um, collaborators uh, about uh, with the, the uh, your uh, research which you want to do and, and if you have of course co-authors uh, um, the favors you know which are used sometimes personal uh, relationship uh, which are not related to to research uh, discussing the co uh, confidential data when you are uh, reviewing a journal um, also using of data or methods or ideas uh, without permission um, using inappropriate statistical technique, uh, um, conducting a, a review of the uh, literature that fails to acknowledge contribution of other uh, people and uh, researchers in the field, uh, uh, giving the same research project, for example, to different uh, graduate students uh, in order to see who will be the uh, better um, Overworking, neglecting, exploiting graduate or postdoctoral uh, studied, uh, students, uh, failing to keep good research records, uh, making uh, derogatory, derogatory comments uh, and personal attacks to uh, uh, colleagues and uh, uh, review authors. Uh, then using, of course, different other uh, uh, tools and uh, uh, harassment or uh, uh, racist or nationalist or you know xenophobic uh, uh, approaches in uh, science and uh, among the colleagues so this can be uh, uh, different examples which maybe you will not find obligatory in uh, uh, some uh, reglementations uh, but uh, uh, they are uh, of course, also not in concordance with the research uh, ethics, not to say like stealing the materials, the books, uh, uh, the ideas, uh, uh, making an author, is it copies of data, papers, uh, and so, so on. There it's, uh, of course, uh, uh, these uh, principles and uh, uh, um, general, uh, aspects of uh, research ethics uh, have a uh, um, responsibility. Uh, the responsibility for, for uh, research ethics, it's uh, in uh, the same uh, uh, way uh, with the principles of uh, research ethics. Uh, so they are free and independent uh, research. Uh, researchers sh uh, uh, should enjoy the individual freedom and uh, have uh, real independence uh, this means, you know, in many countries, in many situations, researchers are pressed uh, by the uh, governmental, by the institutional, uh, by the political uh, uh, subjects, uh, which uh, try to, to deformate the research findings or to, to, uh, to, to have a just uh, one uh, specific conclusions uh, what they want to use in some uh, 
uh, aspects, especially connected with the, the policy and so on. So researchers should be independent uh, um, politically uh, and from other uh, aspects of um, thinking uh, subjectively. Uh, then it's obligations of the research uh, community, uh, which means openness, factuality, and collegiality. Uh, academic assessment, uh, researchers must be uh, open uh, to, to their uh, uh, activities and roles. Uh, supervisors and project leaders have the particular responsibility, of course, leading different research teams uh, supervisory, supervisory relationship uh, have also specific obligations, uh, which should not misuse the position of uh, uh, in own advantage. Uh, you know, for example, in this uh, statement, uh, supervisory relationship, we know that uh, it's a wide practice, for example, of uh, supervisors of uh, generally, for example, PhD thesis to uh, use the articles, the publications uh, of uh, the supervised uh, students uh, where automatically the supervisor, uh, uh, its co-author or uh, the first author usually, uh, many times uh, even not contributing to this work, but using their uh, position in this uh, case. This is also not in uh, accordance with the research uh, ethics generally. Then there uh, should be op openness, accountability, and the uh, critique uh, uh, to the, the research findings. Uh, findings. Uh, scientific publication uh, are uh, the important part of responsibility because once published, you know, it's an important uh, step uh, when uh, the research uh, results are presented publicly and to the uh, specialists at the uh, public as well. So uh, then uh, uh, this can be, uh, it's a proof of some uh, uh, research uh, results and uh, um, already can be used and cited and so on. Um, good citation practice yeah, should be also uh, use it's a responsibility if you take some idea or uh, materials should be uh, correctly cited. Uh, Co-authorship, uh, researchers should respect the contributors and uh, to include the co collaborators uh, also for, uh, like co-authorship when it's a case. And a wide topic in the research ethic, uh, ethics, which is known like plagiarism, yeah, stealing someone else's work and presenting it as one's own. Uh, it's incompatible with good scientific practice. And we know this. And uh, um, in the past, it was more difficult to find maybe some time. But anyway, you know, the scientific community uh, know the general researchers or specific researchers in, uh, in topics or, uh, or subjects. So uh, usually uh, people find and uh, uh, see that somebody uh, used the plagiarism. And uh, nowadays it's uh, uh, also soft programs used even for the master degree, PhD degree and uh, undergraduate even uh, to find that their thesis are not uh, um, plagiated. Um, by, you know, uh, uh, looking and seeing and counting uh, the, the material uh, uh, which should be predominantly personal uh, findings and, and uh, uh, results. And fabrication and falsification in the same way, distortion and uh, uh, concealment, uh, safety and security, it's important also to to be responsible during the research. Uh, of course, consent to participate in research should be obtained uh, not only from the researchers who want to involve in this, but also to, uh, from the subjects and the uh, persons who uh, are part of this uh, research. Anonymity to respect in many cases of uh, social uh, 
uh, researchers, uh, this is very important point and should be stated and respected uh, um, till the uh, all all. Uh, the time of uh, uh, during the, the research uh, confidentiality. Uh, this means you, when you know the the subject, but you should keep it confidential. Um, it's also a part of research uh, ethics. Then um, closer to my researches, I want just to to give some examples uh, because I am, uh, like was mentioned, a specialist in the. Uh, in the human geography and the ethnology, ethnic studies, anthropology. Uh, so uh, I deal more with aspects of uh, uh, cultural, ethnic, uh, linguistic, uh, uh, and uh, different uh, social uh, uh, background. So uh, here it's also important to respect for cultural differences because, of course, we can have some uh, international uh, uh, rules about work in uh, specific uh, regions and uh, then we should be well prepared uh, when we do a research in a specific country specific region specific community uh, to uh, avoid problems and to comply with the traditional ethics in these cases uh, this means also to respect the cultural heritage and uh, then it's very important to, to know uh, the past and the, the present and uh, uh, to understand the perspectives of uh, specific uh, uh, subjects we want to uh, uh, research and take the responsibility. Um, that factors uh, influence the research ethics in different countries, regions or specific communities, which can be of cultural, ethnic, linguistic, confessional, yeah, psychological, uh, political, or legal uh, uh, background. Uh, we should then uh, uh, have the good knowledge of, of this, all these uh, aspects. And uh, this is, for example, from generally from my, my researches around the world, uh, like in the uh, um, Europe or uh, Pacific region where I was. And uh, of course, everywhere you should follow some uh, uh, customs and uh, traditions uh, when you deal with the specific research. Very sensitive questions are re re related with the uh, religion yeah, and all the aspects of uh, spiritual life of the people and communities. Uh, there you uh, should now many taboo, for example, or many aspects uh, which you can uh, 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 avoid or uh, you can should uh, or you should do in order to be trustful and uh, respectful to that particular uh, communities. Um, then uh, cultural, uh, uh, traditional uh, yeah, factor it's also uh, very specific and uh, important. So that this can be in many ways, for example, yeah. Uh, starting with the, your uh, uh, appearance and uh, how you are dressed, for example, because in some societies uh, to be half naked, it's uh, quite a normal uh, aspect, you know, and nobody will uh, judge you. In other societies, it's uh, totally unnormal, and uh, you should follow the specific uh, rules uh, then to avoid the problems and conflicts, and uh, of course to to have the access to that uh, society and the uh, communities. And, uh, then uh, also, of course, there are uh, a lot of uh, aspects uh, related to the uh, customs, uh, to the hospitality. You know, to the relationship, uh, also gender uh, uh, studies are very important here to understand, you know, different approaches uh, between uh, uh, men and women in, in particular societies. Uh, so, uh, uh, for example, uh, yeah, everybody knows about the more conservative Islamic uh, communities, yeah, where uh, especially maybe for women sometimes it's difficult to do uh, research in, uh, in certain uh, uh, subjects uh, 
and you should be properly uh, dressed. Yeah, you should also uh, have uh, proper food. Yeah, uh, to not share uh, some customs which are not uh, acceptable in that uh, societies. But even in uh, other uh, societies, for example, I was in researching in the Pacific Islands like uh, Tonga, uh, like Kingdom of Tonga, like uh, Vanuatu, Tuvalu, Fiji. So particularly in the uh, Kingdom of Tonga, for example, uh, uh, people are also uh, Christian, a Methodist church, but very conservative. So um, you should dress like uh, uh, more officially, usually they are not uh, um, welcome to be uh, dressed uh, like uh, in an uh, informal uh, way, especially if you pretend uh, that you uh, are a researcher and want to do something, then implicitly uh, it's important to have this uh, uh, looking because uh, these are specific, you know, customs and uh, 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 even reglementations. You know, your uh, neighbor country, uh, Kingdom of uh, uh, Bhutan, yeah, uh, Drukul, uh, which have uh, quite uh, also strict reglementations uh, considering uh, your appearance and clothes in uh, official uh, positions, yeah, in uh, teaching in schools or universities. Uh, they should uh, respect the, the specific uh, dress and uh, so on. And of course, same apply for for majority of uh, countries. In my country, we are also, let's say, comparing to other European countries, still quite traditional. So, uh, yeah, the, the relationship in the university or uh, uh, research ethics, it's still uh, also... Uh, with uh, some uh, aspects of polite and uh, also some aspects of dressing, you know, you are not so freely like maybe in uh, some West European uh, countries where their postmodernist society, you know, uh, perceive uh, differently the, this already, you know, like uh, rules. Uh, then uh, my research, for example, was... Uh, a lot about the population studies uh, with the ethnic background. So there are some samples, for example, from the Balkanic region with the different Romanian communities, Romanian speaking communities. Moldovans uh, are part also of these groups of Romanian speaking communities in, in the southeast of Europe. Then, uh, of course, uh, there are many uh, aspects uh, of uh, um, uh, specific uh, uh, importance uh, to to follow when you conduct uh, such uh, researches. Uh, generally, uh, like an ethnologist or like uh, uh, social scientists, like anthropologist, ethnologist, uh, population geography, uh, when you go in the field researchers, um, many people are confused about you. Uh, um, you know, people uh, usually, uh, from, uh, for example, they they understand the geologist uh, after some expl explanations uh, why they are do something because they will find some uh, gold, some uh, oil, some other useful things which can be uh, then converted to money. So this is more or less clear for even for the remote societies uh, who uh, already understand. Uh, the tasks of this kind of researchers. Then uh, there are archaeologists, you know, who digging uh, in different regions. Also, they can do something and find some uh, treasures. Uh, and it's also uh, more or less clear that uh, they do some useful things. But uh, when it comes to uh, sociologists, you know, to, to ethnologists, anthropologists who came and uh, should interact very much uh, with the people and uh, with uh, different persons and uh, put many different questions, sometimes sensitive, you know, sometimes uh, general. Uh, people um, are not always trustful and um, many of them ask you, but uh, why you do this? What is your uh, uh, purpose, you know? Uh, what income you will have from this? What, what uh, uh, because uh, many people, for, for example, even in, in Moldova and many other regions, uh, 
when uh, uh, I'm doing such researchers and the colleagues, uh, we are, uh, uh, can be aggressively treated because are confused with the, some, with the governmental representatives, you know, with uh, the, some uh, propagandists of uh, political parties or of uh, uh, religious, uh, com uh, you know, uh, uh, communities. Uh, because people think, uh, you know, they, they meet some other people who, who came to put some questions and they want to get interaction and uh, they think uh, that we uh, uh, wrongly that, <laughs> that that kind of researchers uh, also come with some propaganda to them. Research is uh, total, should be totally reverse, you know, if some people for example, with political uh, uh, purposes, they uh, they uh, really have the the the, the target uh, to make some propaganda. Uh, we, like researchers, should uh, avoid uh, this totally and uh, understand and uh, take the objective information uh, to put the neutral questions and get the. Uh, the most possibly objective uh, uh, answers. So in the, for example, uh, important question, it's ethics in field researchers. So ethics in field researchers, yeah, we are working, uh, uh, we, it can be also natural sciences, uh, which have their ethics of conduct, because of course, uh, you don't ask uh, the crocodiles or the uh, uh, insects, uh, if they accept to to be researched or no, but uh, anyway, you should uh, also have their uh, the ethics of uh, uh, of uh, bioethics, you know, and uh, to to have also the ethics of respect uh, respectfully to the nature and to uh, harm as uh, less as possible. Uh, by doing these researches. But with the social sciences, the things are even more complicated because you should ask the permission usually of the people where you want to research and put the questions. Uh, then you should, uh, uh, in many countries, uh, even uh, ask for the signing some uh, um, the papers of confidency and uh, uh, you should ask permission for making pictures uh, ask permission for making records, uh, audio, video, yeah, and so on. So this makes sometimes the complicated tasks to do uh, uh, complex uh, research, and not always uh, it uh, it can be even uh, uh, done uh, like planned because some communities are very uh, refractor or close to to the researchers. Uh, in India, you have this uh, uh, Andaman people, you know, in Sentinel Island, for example, uh, uh, where they say it's yeah, it's totally not accepting yeah the interaction with the, uh, even researchers who want to observe their life. So this is the situation. Then the researchers cannot go deeply there. But this is also usual in any community. In any communities, even in the Europe, it's it's a lot of aspects and problems which are uh, connected with uh, such kind of uh, issues and uh, and uh, uh, aspects. Uh, then uh, ethics in processing data, it's also an important part because when we're processing the data, we should be as correct as possible. And of course, here we should be very careful not to mistake the data and not to misinterpret or uh, use it tendentiously. Uh, you know, the data are a big uh, uh, source then to be converted in the findings of research. Uh, and the finally, ethics in dissemination of research. It's by publication of, by publication or uh, by con conferences or uh, by uh, uh, presenting in uh, mass media. If you, we use some uh, sources, then we should always, you know, stated and cited and uh, mention that sources, for example, that this map was made by Professor Monteli in that year and, uh, and uh, this we should, or this map is from historical background, yeah, from the 18th century, but also should be uh, 
mention uh, with the author and uh, uh, where and how it was uh, edited. Then uh, with the personal also findings, like these are my maps, for example, uh, we also should uh, respect and use the, the presenting that this is the results of uh, our research and, uh, and uh, findings. For example, this is the ethnic map by settlements of north part of Moldova. So that is, uh, should be based on the correct data, uh, officially recognized, you know, and uh, uh, by the census. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, with all the uh, aspects which we should very carefully uh, uh, present because it's also a sensible uh, topic, you know, also, also ethnic uh, distribution. It uh, should be a correct one uh, according to the, the, the data. Then uh, by conferences, it's a large uh, way to present all research uh, uh, findings, research uh, results. For example, the, here I present in, in, uh, in Germany or in, uh, in uh, um, uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, there, uh, it's important also to uh, even this is not a publication, but it's important to mention all the sources. It's important to mention the findings and to, to, to have a correct approach in the research uh, aspects. Documentation stage and certification of research. It's also part of uh, research ethics because when we make some documentation, for example, here, uh, I was made uh, research stages and documentation in the Chuvash uh, uh, Academy of Science, uh, where I get also the, the honor of uh, to be academician of uh, the uh, Chuvash Republic. This is one of the uh, federal republics in, uh, in Russia, in the Russian Federation. Then, of course, uh, mm, there's a certification of uh, this research and with your contribution and findings, uh, which you uh, had uh, done during that uh, that time, uh, and uh, finally the mass media. It's an important uh, tool uh, to present your research findings. For example, in radio, TV, or uh, of course broader in uh, online, uh, in internet. Uh, and unfortunately, here it's uh, a big lack of uh, research ethics, especially in online publications, where. Uh, mm, very often uh, there are uh, publications uh, without any uh, mm, uh, background in, in research or uh, with uh, totally wrong and, and uh, mistake information. Uh, but because the people uh, listen on TV or read on some newspaper or seen in internet, in Wikipedia, then they make argument that this is the absolutely truth. Uh, um, but these uh, materials uh, many times uh, have no any uh, review or no any uh, even uh, research background. So this is a problem also in research, like in uh, general problems of fake news in the society, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a wide topic to be discussed as well and very important also in research to be um, and at least uh, here should be the general ethics uh, to present the things. You know, if you don't know something, it's better uh, to be quiet and not write or not say something than to say uh, uh, wrong and uh, 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 mistake uh, things. Um, it's, we, we are not obligated to know everything and uh, everybody. So uh, it's better to say what we really uh, know and have arguments for this. If we don't know, even like uh, researchers, you know, some persons have already quite uh, famous name uh, and misuse this, you know, because somebody knows that this is academician, professor, uh, of course, he is a valuable and important maybe in some subject, but some of Persons misuse and then make comments in any science, any subjects, you know, and just use that name. You know, it's it's a it's a known person, but uh, it's not the correct way, and also it's broken the research uh, ethics. And finally, the uh, research ethics uh, are regulated uh, 
uh, by international law, by national law, uh, sometimes by different regional institutional laws, uh, code of conduits, and the majority of them uh, remain still unofficial principles, which I was already presented and spoken, uh, not obligatory uh, written one, uh, but many of them, of course, people, uh, all the people will consider that should be uh, in this way because there are some general uh, things of uh, humanity and other one which are more specific you know uh, uh, are reglemented and uh, specified in the research uh, aspects uh, also majority of universities and uh, institutions uh, research institutions have an ethics committees uh, which uh, discuss and examine different aspects of uh, research ethics or examine the, the complaints to uh, specific uh, aspects which are uh, uh, related to the research ethics. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I think to not uh, take too much uh, time, I would like to, to thank you very much for the uh, attention and uh, uh, to wish you uh, uh, success and uh, all the best in, in your future uh, research uh, one and uh, and uh, just in general uh, life and uh, to understand that uh, the ethics and research ethics it's uh, not only for scientists but for for every people and uh, generally it's uh, it's a uh, uh, code of conduct you know uh, if you try to do something in in uh, any jobs and any uh, institutions and uh, organizations and of course if you uh, come to publish and uh, to uh, share your uh, some findings and research should uh, follow uh, the research uh, ethic principles and uh, reglementations to be uh, respected and uh, to uh, have a um, positive uh, uh, and correct uh, information to be uh, shared to, to the uh, to the public. Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, once more. And uh, uh, if there are some short questions, I am still uh, here to answer. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for providing very deep insight on some of the concerns relating to research ethics. I'm pretty sure the audience are able to grasp many information on the aforementioned topic. Personally, I got to learn many things related to research. The Dinesh Adhikari, sir, he's also one of the rapporteurs for this webinar. He was running short of breath when he was listing down your long list of achievements. Sir, we are truly great. To have a speak, uh, to have a speaker like you in this webinar, and we will be taking all the information which you, which you just provided in this current webinar. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you for the invitation, and uh, hopefully, uh, will was a, a useful and uh, information for everybody. Yes, sir. So I'd also like to inform all the audience that we are doing the live streaming of this webinar in YouTube as well. Okay. So now there's a slight change in the question and answer session. So it, before we had decided that we'd answer all the questions in the end, but uh, now there's a slight change. If the audience have any question for Dr. Doran, they may ask him directly. Okay, so if anyone has any question for Dr. Doran, please, they may ask, sir, directly. Yes, yeah, yeah. I will try to answer by uh, by chat if uh, there will be some questions. So, Doctor Dorin, like um, before, I think like they are taking some time to you know like put up some questions and all. So till that time, I'd like to answer, ask you one question, sir. Uh, 
So right now, like there's a concern about predatory yeah, journals. Right now, there's a very common thing about predatory journals. Mm-hmm. Uh, like lots of articles are getting published. Mm-hmm. Some people are publishing like four to five articles in a year, which is not possible, sir. Which is not possible if you do it ethically. Mm-hmm. So uh, can you please tell us like some other ways which we can stop this thing, sir? We can be, where we can stop this predatory journal, which is really ruining our current research things right now. So I'd like to know from you, is there anything which we can do from our end to stop this act of predatory journal? Yeah, sorry, it was a question uh, to me or a gen- uh, general yes. one? So it was, a, it was a question to you. So actually I was waiting uh-huh, for uh-huh. others to put yeah, up a yeah. question. So till that time you can just answer the question. If, yes, if, yes, if I, will try, uh, I will try very shortly, of course, to, to, to answer some sure. questions. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, the, so um, I suppose that some speakers will uh, maybe focus more, uh, more uh, okay, particularly on the publication uh, uh, issues, yes, which is uh, one of the yeah, very common uh, aspects in, uh, in uh, that case. And uh, what I would like to say from my perspective, uh, unfortunately, you know, the science uh, become also for somebody like just a business, uh, business uh, leading in an in uh, incorrect uh, uh, way, uh, because the, uh, this appears the Scientology, you know, the ranking of publications, ranking of uh, or a number of publications, uh, and uh, uh, um, this uh, system, I don't think it's the best one because uh, uh, many researchers even, uh, they uh, don't think about uh, to do, you know, uh, quite and uh, uh, re- research uh, like uh, with, with the patient and uh, with the, their uh, background to get the true, but are forced even by the system sometime uh, uh, to publish as much as possible in uh, different uh, uh, journals and uh, and then uh, it's uh, then then it's uh, journals that uh, that uh, profit from from this part and uh, the, they are uh, uh, starting to to uh, take money uh, with the promises that it's a publication of the ranking of web of science of uh, uh, other uh, scopus or other issues. Uh, we know personally uh, many of these uh, journals uh, which are uh, actually uh, using uh, uh, this opportunity to, to make money. And uh, many of them even are fake uh, research uh, journals. You know, we should be very careful because there are uh, many uh, just uh, um, private companies or even persons who in the online space can uh, easily chat, cheat uh, the, the people and the researchers and uh, take some uh, money or publish or even don't publish, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it's not complicated to publish something even in paper, but with not real value in, uh, in, uh, in uh, research uh, aspects. Uh, so for this reason, there are many committees, you know, for example, in uh, almost every country have their uh, accreditation process of journals. So like in Moldova, we have different categories of accreditation, A, A, B, C, D, you know, the journals with different ranking, which are, uh, seems to be examined by the scientific committees and uh, given the priority, then you can check uh, that the, these journals are really part of uh, some uh, uh, scientific accreditation and the networks uh, internationally or nationally, uh, the same uh, way it's uh, it's possible in uh, in uh, many countries, in the majority of, of countries, and uh, uh, it's better to publish uh, in a honestly uh, maybe lower ranking journal, but uh, which is still a, a scientific journal, than to 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 try to to hunt for some publications uh, which are fake one, uh, uh, research uh, uh, meaning uh, there it's uh, absent uh, and there's totally a different uh, purpose of that uh, so-called uh, publications. So it's better to have advice from the supervisors and from the institutional committees and uh, uh, 
uh, also to, to look in the, in the uh, systems of accreditation of any uh, journal and uh, uh, publication. Of course, I don't want to say that uh, everybody can pub we, we are living the free society so everybody can publish a book yeah or uh, uh, something uh, but this uh, in this case you know if somebody published some his ideas which is uh, uh, it, it is just a book you know it should not be pretended to be a, a book in a geography or history or research a scientific book you know there's other kind of books also that can be published with even uh, uh, you know, fantastics and uh, science, uh, and uh, some even uh, ideas which are not clear. But uh, if you pay for this and you publish, and somebody want to buy, but this is, should be very clear. Mention the difference between the scientific publication, scientific book, which should have a findings of research and uh, present the true and the uh, results of some uh, really correct and objective. Uh, um, research and other publications which are you know just are like for kids or uh, for uh, public uh, which are interested in, in, in some uh, other uh, just literature you know to, to read some other things which are not based on the research and not based on the to present the the truth or the correct aspects obligatory Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Does anyone else have any other question? Please, you may ask Dr. Doran. Yeah, sure. So I don't think so there's any question coming up. I think like the information which you have provided is pretty clear to all the audience. So I don't think so there's any chance of doubt. So that's why I don't think so audience is asking any questions. Sir. So whatever you have provided is really clear to all of us. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. We're really grateful to have you as a speaker of this webinar, sir. Thank you so much. Now, moving on with the webinar, I would like to invite Mr. Saurabh Pradhan to introduce our second speaker. Uh, excuse me, Gama, sir. Can I interrupt? Yes, ma'am. Yes, our ma third speaker has already joined. So okay, ma'am. I think um, uh, Vinesha, Dr. Vinay. Okay, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> Vinesha, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. okay. Uh, we are we are just uh, finished the first uh, talk of the webinar so you are in the third i mean this thing session so it's we'll okay be... it's okay fine okay sir thank you so much sir i was very skeptic whether you will join or not <laughs> yeah okay sir yeah you, no, you carry on ma'am you carry thank on thank you sir thank you sir Yeah, over to you, Nervi, sir. Okay, sure, ma'am. Now, moving on to the webinar, I'd like to invite Mr. Saurabh Pradhan to introduce our second speaker, Dr. Nicole, who will be talking on plagiarism prevention. So over to you, Dr. S um, uh, Mr. Saurabh. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. I think I'm audible to you. A very good afternoon to one and all present, one and all involved in this uh, international and uh, say a webinar on research ethics. So very quickly, I would uh, like to uh, welcome a very famous personality, Dr. Nicolette Vesilovsky. She is a native Romanian. She has done her PhD in economics, economic diplomacy and international affairs. She is a prolific writer, she enjoys Working in multidisciplinary fields, she has published several books in her country, including eight books on poems, published different research papers, and participated in several conferences 
and organized numerous workshops in Canada, Romania, China, and India. So her biography is very much decorated. Her works speaks a lot about the kind of personality she holds. So also, she is a collaborator of Stephen Sel Murray University of Sakseva, Romania. She is currently teaching social studies and pre-calculus for a Sino-Canadian Sino international program, uh, program in Shandong, China. Uh, when we talk about her being a writer, she has uh, very beautifully uh, jot down her collection of words in the form of poems. Some of her well-known and famous poems are as follows. The spell of attraction, in token of love you give, in the spring of love, I have been pierced by the arrow of love, the arrow of love, elusive time, love, explain me love, love letter. So it is an honor for us to have uh, such a great personality who will be enlightening us about the plagiarism. So when we talk about uh, plagiarism, it is very much important because whoever is associated with research knowingly or unknowingly, unknowingly we are uh, we we do got get involved sometimes into this plagiarism so plagiarism is an unauthorized use of parts or the whole of any book without giving proper credit to the original creator so understanding why plagiarism often helps in helps happens is essential to avoid it in the future. So without wasting uh, much time, uh, very quickly, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Madam uh, Dr. Nicolette Vesilovsky to enlighten us with your, uh, uh, with your colorful words uh, uh, towards the given subject, plagiarism prevention. Uh, thank you very much for this wonderful introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, surprised that you actually did more research and uh, found out some of the poems I wrote. That's impressive. Thank you, Mr. Samuel. Okay, thank you, ma'am. It's an opportunity, great opportunity for us to get enlightened by you, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to join uh, this wonderful uh, workshop today. And I'm very glad to see uh, also the old friend, Mr. Lozovanu, Dorin Lozovanu, and also uh, Mr. Tapashpal being present here. And uh, so many wonderful participants from uh, uh, different countries, including India. India that is like uh, uh, a wonderful country continent with so many languages and cultures. And uh, also with very talented people that are also uh, wonderful scientists and writers. And um, as well, they uh, work in different fields and are uh, making a lot of contributions internationally. If we speak about engineering, for example. I'll try to share my, um, my screen. Let's see if I can share my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? It's visible? Yes, doctor. Yes, perfect. So we'll discuss about plagiarism prevention. Uh, and I'd like to take it more like a specific example with uh, uh, how to do this when teaching uh, different subjects. I'll include here uh, geoeconomics as an example. And as well, um, I'll discuss about uh, the social studies. And I'll give some examples from the uh, scientific uh, fields uh, as well to see a little bit um, uh, how different researchers are showing uh, uh, different ways on preventing uh, a plagiarism. So uh, why we discuss about uh, geoeconomics as a discipline, we know geoeconomics uh, as an aspect influencing the international relations, especially after 
the uh, Cold War. It was uh, a concept coined by uh, a researcher born in Romania, but he's an American researcher. His name is Nicolae Elotuag. So he described geoeconomics as having the countries changes their uh, uh, main interest from, from geopolitics mainly to geoeconomics. So as during the Cold War, there was that uh, conflict called conflict between uh, the, the states and uh, the Soviet Union after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 90s, we have other perspectives that are uh, perceived as more important uh, and as uh, at the international level and more other actors as well. We don't have just the states, we have also international corporations that uh, start to, to join and we have the working force spreading globally. So therefore, there is the need for the education as a key to prepare this working force for the future, to prepare students to be able to understand this field, to understand how they are going to, to labor and uh, to work in the future, and how they should organize their research, and what is this research about, and how they can avoid plagiarism. Uh, because as my, uh, my colleague, uh, Doreen presented that part of the ethics in, uh, in research, we have the ethics in the research, but another important aspect that we should follow in research and that can help us to prevent plagiarism is as well education. We need to make sure that some people receive the, uh, the that people receive the uh, the amount of education necessary to know what plagiarism is. Some people are plagiarizing without even knowing, and it happened uh, to a very well known person in Europe that plagiarized from me, and then it was found out all in Spain or all over the Spain they were talking about that what that person plagiarized from me exactly on economic diplomacy field. Um, and then it found out that actually plagiarized a mistake from one of my, uh, my draft papers for one of my articles, it wasn't even the article, plagiarized a mistake from a draft paper, and this is how it was found out about what that person did. Anyway, let's go back to the geoeconomics. So geoeconomics will be perceived here as a discipline, which, as I mentioned, uh, uh, plays an important role uh, uh, nowadays internationally and globally, we have not just the state actors, we have new uh, uh, new actors that are formed, and we speak here about uh, expanding European Union, about NAFTA treaties, and about uh, uh, other treaties as well internationally where China and India are as well involved. We have those interconnection between geography and economics that are are transforming the world and are also asking for the uh, um, for the flexibility of the workers. So therefore, those workers that are starting to migrate, they, they also have to be educated in order to adjust uh, at, an international, um, uh, at an international stage. So this paper tries to present uh, different steps that can, that can be followed in order to teach and learn in uh, an in interdisciplinary subject like geoeconomics or social studies in general. And here we refer to geography or history or um, as well philosophy or psychology or uh, other aspects of the, of the social studies field. So here we need to uh, teach those disciplines in a meaningful context. Uh, so this is a, a part of this presentation for, for my paper today, and as well uh, analyzes in the second part of this paper, I'm going to analyze plagiarism and as well to present different ways of, uh, of uh, avoiding plagiarism and different examples from researches that, that were done uh, in the, in the um, 20 and 21st century. Uh, additionally, this paper contains several authentic activities that can be used in the process of teaching and learning um, geoeconomics and that can help to avoid plagiarism. So it's going to be a, a practical guide as well to help to avoid plagiarism. So learning problems, when we speak about uh, uh, plagiarism, it comes also from a learning problem. The learning problem uh, should be solved through this meaningful teaching and learning of, uh, of a subject like geoeconomics. And doesn't matter what is our gender, it doesn't matter those uh, differences between genders uh, or uh, gender identity or what we choose, uh, which role we choose to, uh, uh, to play, 
when we are learners or teachers. Meaningful learning is, uh, uh, is supposed to play a central role in the teaching process. So what is this meaningful learning? Meaningful learning, it, is, it has to be uh, organized in order to help students to understand what they are learning, to connect it with their, with their previous experience, and to make sure that they can apply it in their future jobs, for example, or actual jobs if they are uh, working already, if we speak about master students that are following a master degree or a, or a PhD. So concerning teaching internationally, and in my case, meaningful learning is very, learning is very important uh, because I teach different subjects. And, and in many cases, my learners are not uh, very familiar with uh, those subjects. So if I go back to a general description, academic description from literature review of, of uh, geoeconomics, you, you can see it as a discipline. Uh, refers to this uh, uh, study of the uh, uh, special and cultural and also strategic aspects of what we have resources with the aim to gain sustainable uh, competitive advantage. So we have resources and here we speak about the four types of resources. So when we discuss from uh, the economic perspective, we have those four types of resources. We go from the land, um, we continue with uh, human resources that are very important and here they are central resources we'll discuss about. And we have their strategic resources. We have uh, renewable, non-renewable resources as well that are used nowadays more and more. Uh, we have also the entrepreneurship based on the ideas and development of, uh, of different uh, uh, business ideas. So, uh, and the capital, and the capital that takes different forms for economics. And I, I, I can, I can uh, discuss in more details uh, about it if I present it from, uh, uh, from a financial perspective, which represents the amount of money that uh, fluctuates in, uh, in the market or from, the, uh, from uh, an investor perspective, uh, which represents uh, the machineries and uh, fabrics and everything that is used in a production process. So when studying geoeconomics, what our students need to learn is how to differentiate between between uh, geopolitics, that I said played an important role uh, before the 1989s, before the 1990s, and uh, geoeconomics that brings more actors at the global level. And here we have some examples of those actors that I described already, the, uh, uh, not just the state power, but also NGOs, international organizations, social corporations as well, very important nowadays. Uh, they work also internationally. And, uh, and generally this implies not just the formal education to work together with also the non-formal education. And those people should know how to organize their projects, how to organize the budget, how to uh, come with creative ideas in order to attract different funds if you speak about uh, an NGO or of, of a social enterprise and so on. So generally speaking, there is dif difficult for students when they study geoeconomics to make the difference between uh, geopolitics and uh, geoeconomics. And mainly we will say that uh, uh, geoeconomics concerns more the use of resources and economic interests at the international level, but we have also this economic interest affecting the, uh, the uh, national interest and as, as well, the, uh, we call it the national power that can come from the, uh, from the economic interest. So when students are studying those concepts, they come to different learning problems. And uh, uh, why they do this? Because uh, in some cases, um, this area is quite vast, is new, uh, implies uh, knowledge from different disciplines. We have geography and economics and history as well. Um, and it has impact as well on, on uh, more disciplines. So it invites the learners to read a lot. And many of them, they are not really finding time for a lot of reading and research. So the problem that can arise here uh, is related to this lack of information to difficulty to filter information because they can find a lot of information available online, but they, in some cases they not, don't know how to, to filter it. And this can uh, lead to plagiarism. So the main, why, why does this happen? Because the main misconception 
when students study in a social studies field is that they can just memorize something to pass final exams. Um, and they, they are not actually able to understand what they learn. They are not able to connect with, uh, with the real life situations. We want to have nowadays an education that is connected with uh, real life situations. Um, so therefore, in order to teach students to understand what they are learning, it's very important for us to use a constructive approach. So one researcher that analyzed the role of this constructive approach show that this improves the social skills that are very important in the social studies, improvement of the skills. Um, and the learning is building the, upon their prior knowledge. And also they learn to apply it from experience, like in the future when they, when they have to work in a field, they already will know how to, uh, how to organize their ideas and, uh, and um, work for our research. So here we have, uh, uh, the problem that many students have when they study a new subject, a new discipline, is that they didn't receive authentic learning activities before. They didn't have the chance to, uh, to receive, uh, receive, receive those type of, um, of instructional uh, tasks. And they, uh, sometimes they don't know exactly what happened uh, in a specific historical period, um, First World War or Second World War or the Cold War, when one started when one ended and so on. And um, this uh, problem leads to the temptation for them to plagiarize ideas that belong to others. Some of them not even knowing that this is a problem. So then the question that we're trying to answer in this uh, second part of our research paper, um, it is what is the solution? Solution is our topic, plagiarism prevention. And I stayed uh, for several weeks to, to think how to summarize it so I'm able to describe it to you in just several minutes because it's a very vast subject. And if you surf online, you can find, as I said, different, uh, different uh, aspects concerning uh, plagiarism. And as I said, it's, it's calm plagiarism is analyzed from, uh, from the old past, not just in the 20th century, not just 21st century, but before as well, uh, because it's connected with the ethics and with the fact that we, we should avoid of taking what is not ours, right? Of respecting the others. And it goes, we can go to the old texts that the texts that were, were written in Greek or Latin or, or Sanskrit, if we go to Asia and so on. So sometimes students from other cultures can also have problems um, in order to understand what, what, uh, what they are learning, in order to organize their ideas in, uh, for written questions, and sometimes in order to think in a second language, because they are ESL uh, uh, language speakers. They are not, um, not all of them are native English speakers. Um, so they, they can may have this problem, uh, but as they learn in, uh, in a context where they can understand and connect it with their previous experience and uh, discuss with their peers about what they are learning, they are able to uh, present their opinions in front of the peers and to accept if they are uh, having mistakes or if they uh, uh, need to, uh, to improve their work. So let's see more details about this plagiarism, uh, some aspects of the literature review, um, and uh, some methods in order to prevent it when uh, teaching internationally. So this is the, we'll go finally to the second part of, um, of uh, our discussion. And I'll show you as well uh, an article uh, that was done on plagiarism. And I'll ask you to answer some questions based on that article, which, which is quite an interesting article that I found uh, when searching uh, the literature. So, in order to avoid the plagiarism, students need to understand what it is plagiarism. And we as instructors need to understand that nowadays after 2020, um, the uh, teaching world changed a lot. Why? Because the offline teaching is um, also um, uh, goes together with the uh, online teaching. Uh, so 
those authentic activities may work in this actual teaching context with the use of the modern technology. Uh, and the students have access to a lot of information where they can, uh, they can receive uh, help with uh, a lot of details for their bibliography. And also they can receive feedback and they can have, uh, and they can have the feedback from the instructor and also from their peers. So what we have about plagiarism, more about but plagiarism, because we have this happening after 2020, this change in the paradigm uh, internationally brought another world. We went in, went in 2019 in a world and came back in 2020 in another world. So this another world brought also a lot of issues with plagiarism. Why? Because many students, they had two years just online studies and they said, okay, that's, if, so if it's online, then I just, take answers anywhere I found those answers. So plagiarism comes not as an isolated prob problem anymore, but the problem that arises around the world because we have this easy access to the internet and also the development of more and more uh, teaching and the online materials that are available. So an important aspect is here in order to prevent it, we need to know what are the causes of plagiarism. So we have people that are studying under pressure, they have a deadline and they are not able to finish a paper on time. Uh, difficulty to understand the consequences of plagiarism that can arise on the long term. So this means that they lack uh, enough maturity to understand uh, that that's a mistake. Uh, and then they don't have they don't have enough training concerning the ethics of the research. They, they are not even presented with an ethic guide, or if they are presented, they are not uh, uh, checking on that ethic guide. So they don't know about citing and referencing that are very important when you write an article. You have to know how to cite your sources inside the text, and you have to know also how to use your references. For the Canadian style of teaching, we use APA style for, for citing. Uh, as I mentioned before, also another cause is the uh, lack of English writing skills. Then we have the cultural differences and later I'll speak a little bit about those uh, cultural differences. And as I mentioned, sometimes they have that deadline that comes very fast and they like this management uh, of time skills. Uh, and we, the economy say that time is money, right? So some examples from literature review on causes of plagiarism. General causes of plagiarism, especially after 2020, are related uh, to, the, uh, to the use of technology, a lot of the use of internet, academic pressure, lack of knowledge, uh, collective cultural approach, that if we go to some different cultures in Asia, some Asian countries, some, some learners think that memorizing something uh, from others it's a good practice. We show that we actually respect the others because we memorize their uh, texts. And then later we just write down forgetting uh, uh, to actually uh, describe where we took that, uh, uh, that text from. So how can we do a prevention of plagiarism is to teach in this meaningful interdisciplinary context. Why? Because students can, uh, understand that they are central nowadays, that we teach them in order to, uh, to help them to succeed in the future. And uh, they can develop skills that help them to make connections, to solve problems, to develop leadership skills, especially if we discuss about geoeconomics, um, to uh, also to engage in strategic thinking. And generally when we teach social studies, we have to think about the critical thinking. They have to be able to organize their answers in a, a, at least one paragraph when they answer for a, for a specific question. And also uh, to, to uh, practice their analytical thinking and work uh, collaboratively co uh, together with the others. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we have the formal and non-formal education. 
working with the others in the non-formal education, it is, uh, it is actually uh, uh, quite well used in, the, in NGOs for the trainings. Uh, working with the others in the formal education, uh, some students have the skills to work in a group, others don't have the skill. So we have also to, uh, to see what their needs are and how can we include them. And here we speak about the inclusive education and using the constructive approach for the uh, inclusive education. So uh, concerning plagiarism, the observation from different studies on plagiarism uh, show that in order to prevent plagiarism, it's important as well to observe the perspective of the students on different aspects of plagiarism. Because as I mentioned in many cases, it's not just about ethics, but mostly it is related to their educational background. Um, and how we find out that many students, when they are asked to present a description of, a, of a, an acceptable paraphrasing, they mainly try to rewrite the original text rather than summarize it with their own words in writing. So we want to paraphrase, so you have to summarize it with your own words. You cannot just start writing the original text. That's not paraphrasing, it's just presenting uh, evidence and then you have to uh, cite your evidence too. So uh, why they do that? Because sometimes they are not confident on their writing. So they consider that uh, the writing of others, uh, it's probably a better way to present uh, their own ideas because it's maybe better organized than their own ideas. So uh, Jackson did this research and uh, uh, found out that some students have a complete uh, lack of disability of, um, of uh, practical application of uh, paraphrasing. So uh, this means that they need to be instructed more on paraphrasing. And I will show you some examples of how we can instruct them more on um, uh, paraphrasing. And other um, steps for the plagiarism prevention here, in order to uh, help with plagiarism prevention, different studies suggested that not, uh, is not just the role of the instructors, but as well, we have to, uh, to have the students involved here. They need to understand what plagiarism is. Plagiarism is to take the ideas of the others, not necessarily just present them directly, but take from the others without uh, references, without, without citing your uh, bibliography. Um, and they have also to understand how to identify different plagiarized texts and uh, how to learn uh, different ways to avoid plagiarism. And now we'll show several ways to avoid plagiarism, what we can do for, for different courses. So an important step here, that is also shown from the uh, literature review, uh, is to write assignment specification to include different alternatives to standard essays like case studies that can make it more difficult for students to plagiarize. So case studies invite a student uh, to go on a field, if a social studies field, to go on a field with an interview and ask X, Y, and, uh, and Z about their answers on, on, uh, on different questions, and then to compare those answers as well. So it's more difficult for them to plagiarize on this uh, case study because uh, we know exactly what this case study is about. And also, we can teach skills that can help students to avoid plagiarism. Uh, for example, when I teach uh, uh, in the field of social studies, I give the students the chance to understand what they are studying, what is their role in the society, uh, how to change their attitude. Some of them, as I said, are reserved. They are not used to work in a group. They are not used to uh, speak in public, to speak in front of an audience of other hundred people. Uh, so this can help them to, to build confidence and also building confidence in a, in a classroom helps them later to uh, play an active uh, role in their society. We, we call nowadays students as active learners and we call them as active learners from K-1-12 studies and as well to uh, undergraduate uh, degrees and master degrees and so, and so on. Then also teach skills and knowledge for avoiding plagiarism. So in order to try to avoid plagiarism, it's mandatory to include more than presenting how to write uh, and uh, to organize a research paper. 
but mainly to understand, uh, to make students to understand how to use a methodology of research, how to start from hypothesis, to observe which of hypotheses are going to, uh, to be proved during the research process. And it's not just for the uh, for science. We can apply it as well for, for real science. It's also applicable for the uh, social studies. And so when they learn about a suitable research method and about using references and they are informed about the code of ethics, they have no excuses to say that they didn't know about plagiarism anymore. So they can learn how to use the... Uh, the research methodology, how to organize a project, and, and if they don't know how to organize a project, they can apply research methodology with different case studies. And they, if they don't know that, they can see also different uh, examples. So assignments here are as an example for avoiding plagiarism. So as students need to work in different projects, after having students organi organized in their groups, uh, they can have a draft in Excel about their project where they have their uh, uh, draft with the plan, with the objectives, with the activities, with the tasks. So this is the planning process. Uh, then after they present their first draft, they will uh, be observed for their um, progress on research weekly. They'll receive weekly feedback on their progress of research. And then this will give them as well an enough time to allow them to check on different uh, materials for relevant information to complete their work. So in any, in this case, any motivation for, uh, um, uh, for plagiarism is reduced because they are now able to organize that time and to avoid uh, uh, finishing everything between, uh, uh, before the deadline. So they have time between those weeks to, uh, to finish everything uh, uh, before the deadline. Uh, do I have five more minutes? Can I ask you for five more minutes? Because I, I think my 30 minutes are already uh, finished. Can I ask you for five more minutes so I can finish my presentation? Yes, ma'am, sure. Thank you. Sorry for that. Time management is very important. <laughs> uh, but there are so many things to discuss. And believe me, this is a, just a short, short summary of what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Uh, so. Students need to be told how to learn, uh, not just what to learn. They don't need to memorize. They don't need to just reprodu reproduce a subject, but they need to analyze it and present it with their own words. For example, during my, uh, uh, my courses, students are invited to do research, to read more materials in order to better understand uh, what they are learning, and also to develop their critical thinking abilities. In, or, in order to improve their skills that are uh, related to the comprehension of the information they receive. Um, they learn also how to collect different data, how to organize the data, how to apply the data. Uh, and I can give the example of math as well. When we work on pre-calculus techniques, we, we learn about how to use the uh, quadratic data, for example, uh, to generate different graphs and how to apply those graphs when we play uh, basketball with our friends uh, in the weekend, for example, there is a parabola that is created by the, uh, by the path of the, uh, the uh, basketball and so on. So another important aspect that I will uh, uh, finish with is the cooperative learning that I spoke about it in the context of an inclusive education. And this, this can also uh, uh, help to avoid plagiarism. Uh, so this um, gives the chance to discuss with the others, to build con uh, confidence together in a group, and as well to, uh, to, to build a teamwork attitude. And this is used mainly in the trainings for the, uh, in, the, in the field of non-formal education as well. And it can be uh, uh, more used in the field of the formal education. So uh, this is presented also in the, in, uh, in, um, the uh, literature uh, as uh, being important because uh, students learn uh, from uh, together with a team how to apply problem solving approaches. So in conclusion, uh, teaching and learning in a long-term collaboration uh, is a long-term collaboration between uh, uh, lecturers and learners, and it can help to prevent plagiarism. Uh, before, during, and after classes, students can start from 
de developing critical thinking, or thinking of history, of geography and economics, if we speak about geoeconomics, they learn how to present their ideas. Um, they learn how to uh, use uh, references and how to try to avoid plagiarism. They learn how to use their own arguments in debates and the use of technology to filter information and also how to be prepared for uh, each discussion, for the weekly discussion, if we have a weekly discussion or for every two weeks discussion, in a, if we need to do a presentation of a project or a, of a case study. So uh, in order to have some conclusions and recommendation, I'll just repeat this part with uh, receiving a guide to uh, correctly use ref references, uh, learn to, to speak, to uh, speak in the public and collaborate with the others, learn to organize in writing um, the, uh, your ideas in, um, in uh, complete paragraphs as well. Start from initial hypothesis and try to uh, uh, complete different projects. And I want to give an example in this sense See if I can, I can share this example too. Uh, can I share more, new share? I'll post share, I'll stop share and try to share again an example that I use for an essay chart that students can receive so they know what they have to write about, it's just one minute, I'm sorry, I'm uh, five minutes more. I spoke five minutes more than uh, my time. Okay, so this is a draft, you can see it. Can you see the draft here? Yes, ma'am. Or an essay, perfect. So you have here a general question, a question of research. For example, you are asked to uh, analyze a specific change uh, a climate change or a specific change in the distribution of resources in, in a, the resources in a specific area in the world. So you have to summarize the code and say what the author is saying without repeating the author's words and to see what is the attitude, uh, attitude toward the specific ideology, if it's uh, an ideology there. And then how you support your analysis. And then you, you receive you have to agree or disagree with the code. And you come with the first reason why you agree with the author, with the second reason, with the third reason. And then you compare this with opposing uh, viewpoints. When you come with the uh, first reason, you can use theory from the courses, from our class. Then you explain your reason and defend your reason. Defend your reason means that you have to come with examples and then think about key terms that you can include in your examples. And you continue with this with your second reason why you agree or disagree and the third one why you agree or disagree. And then you compare it with other points of view and you go with other paragraphs there as well. And then you show the first reason why you agree and disagree and the second reason. Meanwhile, you can add also your references and you have to have an introduction where you describe how your research is organized and a conclusion paragraph as well. Conclusion paragraph is mandatory. It's like you imagine you have a sandwich, you have to have your uh, pieces of bread on the top and also below the sandwich. If not, there is not a sandwich, right? So that's an essay as well. It's like a sandwich, you have to have everything together. And I'll share something else as well, which will go with the questions. It's exactly starting the uh, question session. Uh, is from, uh, from an article uh, called Plagiarism, What Do the Students Know? And this is actually on other uh, field of research. It's not on social studies. It's actually on the, the science field of research. But because we come here from different fields of research, we can see, I will try to share my screen with this one and I'll finish with this part. So how will, will you describe plagiarism? Plagiarism is using someone else's words as if they were your own for A, B, using someone else's ideas as if they were your own, C, using someone else's results as if they were your own, D, sharing work with someone else and pulling ideas, and E, getting your ideas from a textbook. So you can choose as many answers as you think, and you, you have to think which one you consider that is really a, a plagiarism and which one you consider it is not really a plagiarism. 
And plagiarism is legally and ethically wrong because you may get caught and lose marks. A, because it is dishonest. B, C, assignments that are plagiarized fail to demonstrate your knowledge of uh, the work. D, you don't learn anything by copying someone else's work. Or E, it steals other people's idea. And the third one, you may be accused of collusion if you submit an assignment, produce it as a joint effort under your name only, if you work with your peers and you just uh, uh, submit it in your name, uh, copy a completed assignment that is your friend's assignment uh, that is emailed to you. And sometimes some students even forget to change the name and they just send an, uh, uh, the assignment of that other person. Uh, work in a group as instructed to produce a poster as a joint effort lend the complete assignment to a friend who then copies any part of it or pass of someone else's work as your own for your own benefit. Uh, and be, be careful when generally students, several students uh, that were asked uh, this, uh, those questions, they answered, many of them didn't see plagiarism um, as a being a form of plagiarism if they took information from a friend that allowed allow them to, to, to just copy the information. They consider it ethical, so therefore, if, if they were allowed to take that information, even if they, it was not theirs, uh, they considered that uh, it was acceptable. So I invite you to reflect on those questions and maybe we discuss what you consider plagiarism being the plagiarism and if you had situation in your daily life uh, concerning plagiarism. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nicolette. The topic plagiarism, which you just talked about, is a very wide topic, ma'am, but uh, you did a wonderful work on summarizing it without missing out on any important points, and that too within such a short time frame. Thank you so much, ma'am, for providing your wonderful insights on various topics ranging from plagiarism to geoeconomics. I'm pretty sure that our audience were able to grasp many information on plagiarism, like the causes, the probable solutions, and the ways to avoid plagiarism. So if there's any question for Dr. Nicolette, please, uh, the audience can ask ma'am directly. If there is no question, I'll write my email address on the chat group so this, people can email me with questions or insights of their experience on their research. I can write my email address with your permission. If you sure, sure ma'am, sure ma'am, you can do that ma'am. And maybe so later after the other speeches, maybe people will reflect on- uh, I, have, I have one question. Speech and they can... Oh, please, yeah. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, I would like to ask you about uh, uh, this. Also, we often face in academics that uh, accidental plagiarism. Okay, sometimes, sometimes we do our own work, but uh, say it. I mean, coincidentally or accidentally, it matches with the work already being done by someone. So, in that case, I mean, is it does that it still count as plagiarism, or uh, what? Uh, in that scenario, what should uh, uh, an academician should do? Accidental yes, plagiarism. When, when you, yes, uh, accidental, accidental plagiarism uh, refers to a form of plagiarizing without being informed uh, uh, previously that, that it's uh, plagiarism or you, you may have same ideas with some other authors, but it's impossible for you to describe your ideas exactly like some other authors. If you, have, if you are in the field of uh, real sciences and you have a, a formula, maybe the formula will go to be the same, but when you have to come with the interpretation of the formula, that will be a totally uh, different subject. So when students have to upload their assignments, we use the plagiarism check uh, using different, there are a lot of, um, of resources we can use for uh, plagiarism check. So uh, we can take the essay and uh, uh, putting it in and we find out how, what percentage uh, is plagiarized. If uh, students, uh, even sometimes when even when the students give the um, uh, references, uh, it can go as plagiarized because you 
you see the references directly, they're paraphrasing directly, but they show the reference. So that's not uh, plagiarism. It's just the program that that found out as a plagiarized form. But if you find out uh, where it's like 99% uh, uh, plagiarized work, then you know very well that it's not the work of, uh, of that specific person. So there are no excuses for plagiarism. Okay, ma'am, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, this okay. is a one thing called the self-plagiarism self is also there, no? We have to be careful of that also, self-plagiarism. Self-plagiarism is also not yes. acceptable, it's not ethical. And it is yeah. used by many researchers because they also have this deadline where they have to upload the information and they take different uh, information from one paper to another. And self-plagiarism, it is considered also unethical. And it, it's called self-plagiarism. Self plagiarism can take different forms. So play, uh, plagiarizing uh, means uh, mainly when we speak about plagiari plagiarism, we have this ethical perspective when you copy something from someone else, which is totally wrong, means like stealing from someone else or something that it's not yours and using it for your own benefit, for publishing or for presenting for something without citing the uh, the reference, then that's, uh, that's uh, unethical. We, we, we are uh, totally against this. But then is also the fact that some students like uh, uh, freshman students, um, are, are not actually used with the research and they don't know about the plagiarism and they lack maturity to understand the long-term consequences of plagiarism and then they and, and they, they just copy ideas that are not theirs. But then in that case, for the second example, there is the education that can prevent it. So we have to understand the causes of plagiarism and how can we prevent it by giving assignments that doesn't will not allow them to plagiarize. It's probably the best way to prevent plagiarism. And by teaching them about ethic, ethic, uh, there are ethic guides uh, that usually we learn when we do more research, more advanced research. We learn the, for the PhD research. We learn uh, in the first year how to organize our ideas for a scientific paper, right? So we have the the a guide that uh, help us to organize our research. Uh, we start from different hypotheses. We prove those hypotheses. And then there are different other articles that can be written, like, for example, for assignments. And in, in this case, I'm... Um, for projects and as well for uh, case studies where I can see a direct implication of my subjects or my learners. So then I can, I can help to, to avoid plagiarism. Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your valuable words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, I can see one more question in the chat box, but it's not really clear. Like uh, Ramesh Kumar M is asking, is there any scale of this? So I'm, I guess, like he's talking about plagiarism. So is there any scale on plagiarism? Because the question is not really clear, ma'am. So yeah, it's probably I, re uh, I already answered that on saying that there is totally unethical, so that's unacceptable. And then the second part is with the educational approach that uh, we can use in order to prevent it. Because some people lack maturity on, uh, on uh, dealing with different assignments. Yes. And I gave some examples on this sense. If uh, there are other issues, Mr. Kumar can, uh, can ask us on another question. I'll write my email as well. Sure, ma'am, sure, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Not now I would like to ask our, uh, our convener, Dr. Yunus Subba, to kindly introduce Dr. Vinay Kumar. So, now over to you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, actually, Dr. Vinay is um, a very good friend of mine. Right, Vinay, sir? <laughs> uh, actually, we are associated with each other's... Uh, I think from one decade, I guess. We were in yeah, an yeah. orientation program in uh, Himachal Pradesh University, Simla. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Vinay, sir, thank you for joining us uh, in the webinar. And 
we are very much happy that uh, you uh, accept our invitation and you agreed to share your information, your insight in the topic. And let me tell you, um, uh, all the audience, uh, that Dr. Vinay is very friendly, very enthusiastic and very intellectual personality. Personally, I know him. He's a very, I mean, helpful person. Um, and, you know, he has done a lot of work, as I've already told you, that he has done a lot of work in, Arkel, in his respective field. And uh, we are uh, very much looking forward to hear from you, Dr. Vinay. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Now I would like to uh, call uh, Mr. Pranay uh, to introduce Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Vinay Kumar. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Uh, Mr. Pranay. Thank you, Yunus ma'am. Uh, it's, it's an honor for me to uh, introduce our distinguished speaker, Dr. Vinay Kumar, sir. Uh, Dr. Vinay Kumar, sir, holds a PhD in geography from Vishwavarthi University and PhD in education from University of Gorbanga, Malda. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He's done his... Uh, excuse me, sorry. Sorry, I, I think there's a um, confusion. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, I would like to... Um, call upon Mr. Dhanraj Rai to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Uh, Dr. Vinay Kumar. Dhanraj sir, over to you. Um, uh, Ma'am, mine is uh, Dr. Tapas Paul. Hello? Okay. Okay, okay, there is a... So we're really sorry for the delay. There has been like a slight confusion. So please give us like two minutes more to clear this confusion. I'm really sorry for this delay. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. I thank Dr. Yunus, ma'am, and the organizing team for giving me this opportunity to briefly introduce our esteemed speaker. Vinay Kumar is a, is a distinguished is, is, is a distinguished academic and is presently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Ancient Indian History, Culture, and Archaeology. Banaras Hindu University, Baranasi. Prior to this, he has worked as assistant professor at Indira Gandhi National Tribal University, Amar Kantak in Madhya Pradesh. Dr. Kumar has worked as consultant and assistant archaeologist in ASI. He has also worked as research scholar in Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts and Indian Archaeological Society, New Delhi. His areas of specialization includes field archaeology, art history, and heritage management. Dr. Kumar is a recipient of gold medal from former Honorable President of India for being an university topper. Dr. Kumar has been awarded Junior and Senior Research Fellowship by University Grants Commission. He has also been awarded 
National Museum of Korea 2014 and 2016 Museum Network Fellowship by Government of South Korea. He has been awarded Study and Research Grant by the Nehru Trust for the Indian Collections at the Victoria and Albert Museum to undertake project on ethno-archaeological perspectives of mega on megaliths of Pastar. He has participated and supervised many archaeological excavations, namely excavations at Lahur Deva in UP, Viranna in Haryana, Baror in Rajasthan, Hansi in Haryana, Banpura in Madhya Pradesh, Gambir Watola in Madhya Pradesh, etc. He has conducted archaeological excavations in the site of Matigaon, Farsand Mohanpur district Chandauli as the director in field season 2019-2020, 2020-21 and 21-22. He has undertaken many research projects and their outcomes have been pre presented in many national and international workshops, seminars and conferences. Dr. Kumar has worked with many international and national scholars. He has published more than 45 research papers in many titled West Asian and Hellenistic elements in Indian art, Manishusna, archaeology and history complex, Indian art, archaeology and culture. Citating a uh, legendary archaeologist, Professor B.B. Park and Pura Tattwa Vaivav. He is a life member of many national and international committees, societies like Indian Archaeological Society, New Delhi, Indian Association for Asian Heritage, Colombo, Society of South Asian Archaeology, Pune, Museums Association of India, Indian Art History Congress, Indian Society for Greek and Roman Studies, Madhya Pradesh Itihas Parishad, Indian History Congress, Wakanka Rock Art and Heritage Welfare and Society, Bhopal, Numismatics Society of India, Varanasi, Bhatia Itihas Sankalan Samiti Kasi, Indo Hellenic Research Center, New Delhi, etc. He has organized eight international and nine national conferences. Dr. Kumar is well versed in Persian, German, Sanskrit, Oriya, Bangla, and Mithili languages. We are indeed privileged to have. Dr. Vinay Kumar with us today as our speaker, and I request sir to kindly enlighten us with his valuable talk. Thank you. Can you hear me, Pranayji? Yes, sir. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. And first of all, I would like to extend my gratitude to the organizers of uh, this uh, international webinar on one of the important topic that is the understanding of the research ethics, which is being organized by Sikkim Government College, Renok. So I'm very much uh, thankful to all of you. And also I'm thankful to Pranayji for giving such an elaborate introduction about me, although I don't deserve that, that one. Uh, so today I will be talking about one of the important topic, which uh, just now you have heard about the issues of the plagiarism, how to combat it, and what are the measures to check it. And I will be talking about the predatory publishing. That is the main issue. And all the research scholars or the students or the we teachers, all of us are very, very much concerned about this one. So what are the issues, challenges, as well as the future path for this predatory publishing ethics? Just uh, please let me share my slides. Pranayji, can you see my slides? No, yes, sir. sir. Hey. Uh, please, no, it, uh, please help me it, out how to... It has disappeared again, sir. Moment. Yes, sir, it is okay visible, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, so should I uh, go for it? Yes, sir. Can you see the full screen or it is uh, still on this mode? Small thing. Okay, so let me just start. Should I go? Yes, sir. 
okay so before i talk about the preliminary journals we should understand why it is needed for that we have to understand what is research so one of the famous uh, this personality who was the nobel laureate also albert sesnet he is of the view that research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought that is research so this is the full form of research for each and every alphabet you can see it here research is rational way of thinking expert and exhaustive treatment search for the solution exactness ample analytical analysis with the adequate data relationship of the facts careful recording or the critical observation as well as the honesty and the hard work all these features they combine together to make a research so now one of the important aspect that is the publishing so academic publishing has changed now it is tremendously with the spread of the open access journal that we all of us know and the shift to the online publishing so all these two issues of the open access journal as well as the online publishing has just changed the all of the way so there are now more journals for the authors to publish their work in than ever before so this benefit authors by providing more avenues for the publication but it also puts greater responsibility on them to avoid the serious threats of publishing in a predatory journal for that we have to understand what is this predatory journal this predatory journal or the publishing is a phrase basically which was coined coined by jeffrey bill who was the librarian at the university of colorado at denver that refers to the journals now i am giving you the definition of predatory journals so it refers to the journals whose main purpose seems to be to exploit as scholars as well as the academicians and their need to publish the results of their research so this is the uh, this uh, predatory journal so it is just like a just a large face which gallops everything from the scholar so this term predatory here to is to describe the journals that are self serving and intentionally do not seek to provide the value to the research community or maintain the integrity of the scientific literature so when we talk about this term predatory there are other synonyms for this term also like the deceptive pseudo fake illegitimate exploitative scam bogus as well as the non reputable journals so all these terms are synonymous based with this predatory journals so what is the predatory publishing issues so do you have to understand and how it can be changed so there are many definitions for this predatory journal so in the the simplest form is my slide moving no sir hey, yes sir oh. i am uh, sorry yeah. yes yes so, yes yes sir now it is moving yes sir so this predatory journal is a journal that deceptively takes uh, from an author the content of the deceptive deceptivity taking from an author can have number of the forms whether it is in the form of the opinion or whether in the form of the content or so many issues this predatory journal seeks to obtain the money from the authors that you uh previous uh, this speaker he was talking about he giving while giving the answer he was talking about this issue so usually via the article processing charges so in the form of this uh, usually with the article processing charges they are taking huge amount of money from the researchers or the academicians for publishing their papers into the open access but they fail to uphold the standard editorial peer review or well as the other ethical publishing practices that are reputable journals do so they typically conceal lie about or mislead the authors on fees as well as the publication process so this is the main aim of the predatory journal so the most recent definition of this predatory journal and the publishers was published in december 19 2019 in nature the famous journal nature where it is defined as predatory journals and the publishers are the entities that prioritize self interest at the expense of the scholarship and are characterized by the false or the misleading information deviation from the best editorial as well as the publication practices a lack of the transparency and the use of the aggressive as well as the indiscriminate solicitation 
practices. So this uh, definition was published in 2019 in the famous journal Nature. So what is this difference between the reputed journal as well as the predatory journals? So we know we have to understand these two terms. These adequate, these uh, this reputed journals, they have the adequate as well as the qualified review. Qualified independent editorial oversight is there in case of the reputed journal. They, are, they have the transparency in terms of taking the fees as well as the procedure as well as the policies. So everything is transparent in case of the reputed journal. And it is accepted by the this report. Uh, this uh, reputed organizations of or the uh, scholarly organizations like Web of Science, Escopus, Mendelin, the Directory of the Open Access Journals, Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association. So all the organizations reputed, these all are the scholarly organizations which accept all these kind of publications. When you are uh, publishing your this work or the research work in a reputed journal. So why does do, first of all, we have to understand why the academicians publish in such journals. What is the reason? Why we are going for this predatory journal without knowing the, everything about those predatory journals. So in research environment, there is usually more value for the quantity over quality. Nowadays, just we want the number of the publication. That is the main reason. Hiring and, uh, and promotion of the academics is based largely on their number of publications that we know today. So these predatory journals have helped many pseudo researchers to prosper. So these are the main reasons for the uh, person, this kind of this uh, fishing uh, organizations like the predatory general publishing house, they have been come up to take the money from the researchers. So now we have to understand what is the harm caused by these predatory journal when we go for that one. Predatory as well as the low quality journals, they corrupt the literature. Most of them, for example, the best affected area or the worst affected area is the medical science, where it has been particularly hit the heart with the journals low devoted to the unscientific medicine. So the peer review is at the heart of the academic evaluation in case of the predatory journal and publishing without the peer review while pretending that peer review has been done. So it gives the poor as well as the mediocre academics a chance for the job and the promotion which should go to better qualified researchers. So these are the harms and it impacts the researcher a lot. So what kind of impacts are there? In longer terms, your reputation is sacrificed for immediate gain or for no any academic gain if you go for the predatory general. So it is permanent, uh, this, this kind of this spot this black spot on your career is permanent. Even if your research is sound, it will likely to be disgraded by the academic community if published in a predatory journal. If you publish such kind of your work in this predatory journal, your reputation is just tarnished forever. So this is also the waste of your the research funding when you are publishing through any or through a, as an outcome of your any project or the research work. So it will be held, and for that you will be held accountable by for your funding agency. So this is another harm. So and so, when uh, we talk in a gist or in a summary way, what are the this when this uh, uh, bad effect of this uh, harm caused by this predatory journal? So it is damaging the external reputation, inexperience, and the lack of knowledge. If this is the lack of quality control and reproduce, uh, reproducibility is just uh, at the this uh, stakeholder and you will just have to lose so many information and concealed conflict of interest will be there in case of this. So this is the most worrying aspect in case of the when we do not go for the any kind of the peer review for your research work. So what are the warning signs how you will identify whether it is a predatory journal or a publisher is a predatory one for that some there are some of the warning signs so what is the warning signs you have to find out whether this is included under the predatory reports by the campbells international that uh, the can campbell international it uses around 60 indicators to evaluate whether a journal is predatory or not for that you have to go and search on the website that I will be giving you the link also. So 
you have to find out is it this particular journal is indexed in large trusted database of the scholarly world uh, or not you have to find it out and it uh, whether it has uh, you will find that it has many mistakes in english basically in the grammatical uh, grammatical portion and you will find the false information about these predatory journals on the website also and it promotes that the international standard the serial number that is issn number and the fees on the journal uh, and the misleading matrix as a sign of the quality so it lacks the clear as well as the transparent information about the processes of the fee and what are the process for the this review of your uh, particular paper so all these things will be lacking in case of predatory uh, journals it has an anonymous editorial board you will not able to find out the who are, are the person concerned with the editorial board so that information is also not properly given to the this uh, contributors and it has a journal name url as well as the branding that is very similar to a reputed journal so you see here they will be using the same kind of name when it is nature they they will just uh, change some letters or something like that and you will find that this is uh, just like a nature and provides insufficient information or the heights information about the authors also this kind of predatory journals and the name of the journal does not adequately reflect its origin from where it has been originated for example a journal with the word canadian or the swiss in its name when neither the publisher editor nor any proprietor institutional or affiliate releases whatsoever belong to the canada or the switzerland so this kind of misleading information will be there by these predatory journals so for before publishing any kind of your a research work you have to think you have to check then you have to submit your paper for the publication so before when you are going to if you have prepared your research paper first of all you ask yourself is your supervisor or your guide is familiar with this journal you have to just find out this answer is it indexed by the scopus or the web of science or is the journal or the publisher named on the predatory publisher list and this is the the link to find out the list of all the predatory publishers that is you can see it here that link one so there are some of the checklist to find out or the identify the fake journals or the bogus journal so do you or any of your colleague know this journal you have to find out can you easily identify and contact the publisher is the journal clean clear about the type of the peer review it uses and are the article indexed in the services that you use and is it clear what fees will be charged for publishing the paper so do you recognize the editorial board is the publisher a member of the recognized industry initiative that is coop doaz oaspa open access general uh, database so how to spot this spot all these predators how you will catch them up so they will send you the spam this mail to the students as well as the academicians and the editorial board either the non you will find that they are either non existent or the same person name is as the editor of the multiple journals you will find and name of the journal does not reflect its origin and name of the journal is very broad to attract more content from the this contributors and you will find the grammatical errors on the website always in case of predatory journal so what are the basically the practices of these practice this predatory journals these uh, predatory journal they publishes the pseudo science articles basically and they launches with fleet of the empty journals no value added services such as the references linkages has been provided in case of this predatory journals or the fake journals or the bogus journals they are not indexed by the genuine index such as scopus or web of science which i told you and they have the misleading information about having an impact factor so which is an important factor to know about our publication so they will uh, so you can see here this is an example of the uh, this mail a scam email where you will find how it has sent the email and he has sent about that our journal is just uh, published or it has this so much such impact factor it has this doi number it is uh, published in the scopus 
these kind of information will be sent as an spam mail or the bogus email to you so now the most important part of this uh, thing of my talk is to how to measure to combat what are the measures to combat the predatory journals for this we have to understand the campbell list so in 2008 the japrik bill a library at the university of colorado which i told you he used this term uh, predatory for the first time and he used he uh, started a bills list which is a list of the basically a documentation of the open access publishers who did not conduct legitimate peer review as well as the published virtually and submitted article in exchange for a fee so he was the first person who just first of all pointed out all these issues of the predatory journal so in uh, may 2017 a meeting of the society for this scholarly publishing that is the campbells international a company that offers the scholarly publishing analytics as well as the other scholarly services announced that it is intended to launch a blacklist of the predatory journals and it was published it was uh, tried to be published in june and this company had started work on the blacklisting criteria also for these predatory journals in basically in 2016 only so in july 2017 both a blacklist as well as a white list were offered for the subscription on their website by this gabels international so that is one of the most criteria to find out about all these predatory journals which you will easily find on the website so there are other efforts also by the government agencies as well as the individuals levels also which i told you so here some of the measures to combat all these predatory journals are there so more transparent peer review such as the open peer review as well as the post publication peer peer review has been advocated to combat this predatory journals so these two uh, criteria or uh, these two methods should be followed to find out the predatory journals so in an effort to set apart the legitimate journals as well as the publishers from the non legitimate ones the principles of the transparency and the best practices have been identified and issued collectively by the committee on the publication ethics that is doaz as well as the world association of medical editors in case of the medical journals the open access uh, scholarly publishers journals review websites that is the crowd sourced or the expert run websites have been started and some focusing on the quality of the peer review process as well as the extending to the non open access publications has been started and a group of the libraries as well as the publishers they have launched an awareness campaign also to find out all these predatory journals other efforts are also there for combating these kind of issues of the predatory journals so a number of measures have been suggested to further combat the predatory journals and they have been uh, called as the research institutions to improve the publication literary notably among their junior researcher in developing the countries like india as well as other countries some organizations have also developed criteria in which the predatory publishers could be spotted through providing tips that include avoiding false fast publications and in when we uh, think about uh, our own country india here the ministry of human research development has just started an campaign and started an initiative to remove all the bogus journals and for that a requirement that scholars get at least two research papers published in a university grant uh, commission approved journal that is the ugc care listed journal before submitting their doctoral thesis this is one of the criteria in the university that we all of us know and it is coupled with the pressure on the university teachers to get their research published regularly in the academic periodicals and because of this has it has produced an unexpected side effect that is the growth of these kind of predatory journal in case of india so you can see here there was a uh, meeting here to remove all these uh, kind of this predatory journal here for this study entitled a critical analysis of the ugc approved list of the journals a team of the six researchers in association with the human resource development ministry analyzed around 1336 academic periodicals randomly 
selected from a list of 5,699 journals in the so-called university source component. And their calculation was that, that over 88% of the non-indexed journal in the university source component of the UGC approved list could be of low quality. While the UGC website list around 32,659 journals, university source journals 5,699 are those which are recommended by the various universities in the country, the paper notes. And the UGC has admitted that it received several complaints about the inclusion of the low quality journals soon after the release of the approved list of journal on June 2, 2017, that we know UGC care list that was published by this university grant commission. And this UGC has removed a few journals after an evaluation and the pay that was just to uh, find out through that uh, uh, research work. And that was the outcome that the over 88% of the journals are substandards, and it is the own study by the UGC. And the dubious publication or the fake publications, they were identified by the team of the researchers that included the Bhushan Patwardhan, a professor at the Savitri Bai Pule University, Pune. And, it was, he was, and he was a, there was an, a special invitee member for the UGC Standing Committee for the notification of the journals as well as the former vice chancellor of the Symbiosis International University. So these persons were included uh, in that committee for the UGC case, uh, care list uh, finalization committee. You can see it here, Professor Usan Patwardhan, uh, who belongs to the Savitrivai Pule University. And here, out of the 1,336 journals, which I told you earlier also, which was studied, analyzed, 897 were disqualified from the UGC approved list of the journals by the Human Research Development Ministry for providing the false information such as an incorrect ISSN number, making false claim about the impact getting published in their pages and indexing in the dubious database, poor credential of the editor as well as the non-availability of the information such as address, website details as well as the name of the editors. Papers published in the dis dis disqualified journals will not be considered valid. So this was the decision taken by the UGC grant, that committee of the UGC grant commission or that the UGC approved list journals, which, you, uh, which all of us are now following. So you can see here, so these all are the uh, notifications by the UGC. So it is an alarming situation that such a huge percentage, 88% you saw of the journals are bogus in case of India only. And globally, it hampers the image of our own country. This was the statement given by the chairman of that committee, Patwardhanji. And the HRD ministry has adopted a very positive approach after that meeting or after that uh, this report for dealing with the issue and has decided to remove all the bogus journals from the UGC list shortly that Patwardhan uh, just uh, informed to the committee. And so this was that one. And coming to the conclusion, I would like to show that, so we have to be very careful about this hijacking uh, journal uh, publication policy. And Butler in 2013, he reported in again, in the Journal of Nature, that the two print only journals that do not offer the electronic version were hijacked by the cyber criminals. And the hijackers set up the false web website and they took money from the authors who were attempting to publish their original research work in one of the journal indexed by the science citation indexed and the Thomas Reuters matrix product that complies the impact factor for the cover journal. So hijackers, they make money because of these predatory journals by stealing the identities of the legitimate journal and collect the data or the article processing charge on the papers that they are submitted. And the cyber criminals have cheated thousands of the professions professionals as well as the PhD scholars, mostly from our own country, developing countries, and those who were in the urgent need of the publishing their article in the journals, they were the most affected persons. And usually the target group of the cyber criminals are the journals with not so high impact factor value because it would be difficult for the hijackers to convince the authors that a high impact factor journal invited to the, them to publish their research work with a peer review process done within just a couple of weeks. 
so these all are the conclusions so we have to be very careful while publishing our paper when we are publishing in any reputed journal first of all we have to check all the criteria which i have given to you people thank you very much for your kind uh, attention if you have any query you can just ask me thank you so much dr vinay for shedding light on the topic predatory journalism which clearly is a major issue sir plaguing the academic life right now and you have provided us with a clear 360 overview on predatory journal so so if if an audience have any questions for the sir they can ask sir directly Uh, sir, uh, can you please provide uh, the audience with the email ID in the chat box? They might uh, ask you a question out there. Yeah, I have provided my email ID as well as the mobile number also. This is my Thank WhatsApp so number sir. also. At any time, you can contact me on this number. so whatever the experiences i have uh, with me i would like yes. to love to share with you people okay thank you so much sir so now uh, moving on with the webinar i'd like to invite on uh, dhanraj sir to introduce a fourth speaker dr tapus pal so over to you dhanraj sir uh yes yeah, sir Shall I start, sir? Dhanraj, mm, uh, sir, kindly introduce our fourth speaker. Okay, sir. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I like to thank uh, uh, Karma sir for giving me uh, uh, this opportunity to introduce our esteemed speaker. and the organizing committee so here i am to uh, welcome and introduce our esteemed speaker uh, for this uh, session of international webinar dr tapas pal and he will be talking about plagiarism det detection system penalties and consequences dr tapas pal is presently working as an assistant professor of the department of geography raigans university uh and he is also in charge of center for differently abled person raigan raigans university india he is also international collaborator of uh, geitec federal university of rondona brazil he has a uh, numerous working experience experiences uh, like uh, he has 6 years of teaching experience and is continuing in the department of geography Uh, raigans university india he has done a number of uh, research project such as two projects of icssr impre ss government of india and one project of department of science and technology of biotech government of west bengal uh, he went through a number of orientation program uh, recently he attended uh, orientation program in university of uh, jammu jammu and kashmir from 29 june 2018 to 26 january uh, sorry july 2018 and he has attended ugc short term 7 days workshop on mooks in biswa bharati shanti niketan from 5th to 11th february 2019 uh, in a ak das gupta center for planning and development uh, center is sponsored by the niti ayog government of india he has attended refresher course in jawaharlal nehru university new delhi from 16 september to 20th uh, september 2019 uh, he has experiences of paper presentation in national international seminars conferences 
total of 64. He also has experiences of uh, pro uh, giving uh, special lectures, total 44. He also chair and uh, he also um, did the chairperson and keynote speaker in national and international seminar, total of 13. And he has also experiences of organizing secretary, uh, convener, joint convener of seminar, a total of six. He is also a member of uh, like Union of Geography Information Technologies, Uttar Dinaspur, People of Animal, Animal and National Association of Geographers, India, collaborator member of GEITEC, uh, Debinagar, Zagoi Theater Group, uh, Prantnik Center, uh, Care the Earth, uh, Samhita Foundation, etc. He also has uh, um, experiences of providing advice, uh, advice to the PhD, resource scholar and ampel resource scholar. He also has a number of other experiences like providing uh, lectures, training at, at international college, university and organization. Uh, Bangladesh in 2015, Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand in 2016, Royal University of Bhutan, Bhutan in 2017. In 2017, again, uh, University at Albany, New York, USA. In 2018, UN Sustainable Tourism Based Training Workshop in Jeju Island, Republic of Korea. UN SD Training and Sarubhaya, Indonesia in 2018. Chodak Gram Government College, Bangladesh in 2019. In 2019, again, uh, he gave lectures on municipality planner of Chodak Gram, Bangladesh. In 2019, Amazon Port Velo Rio de Janeiro, Federal University of R Rondonia, Rural Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. FIMCA Institute, Brazil. His uh, academic and degrees are, as, are uh, as follows. He did his PhD in education, University of Gorbanga, India, on the topic environmental films and education for sustainable development uh, contemplation. He did his postdoc in geography uh, from Northeastern Hill University, a central university, Shillong, India, and the topic Dukpa tribe in Duksa and Sikkim, socio-cultural terrain, settlement structure and ecological sustainability. Uh, he did his uh, BA and MA in geography and BA from Bishop Bharati, a central university, Santiniket in India. Uh, he again uh, did his MA, gender studies from Indira Gandhi National Open University, a central university, MA, in tribal development, TGOU, postgraduate diploma in remote sensing and GIS, Jadapur University, India. He completed his postgraduate diploma in disaster management, Indira Gandhi National Open University, a central university. Again, he completed his postgraduate diploma in intellectual property rights, Indira Gandhi National Open University, a central university. Uh, postgraduate diploma in folklore and cultural studies, in uh, Indira Gandhi National Open University, a central university. His uh, significant professional awards are uh, 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 both uh, national, international, and fellowship. Like he has, sorry, he had ICSSR postdoctoral fellowship uh, for postdoc in Northeastern Hill University, India. He has uh, UGC NET, JRF, and SRF fellowship, Government of India, Bishop Bharati. In India, he has a workshop on environment tourism at Republic of Korea. Workshop on sustainable tourism on 2018 at Indonesia, uh, founded by Research Institute of CIFAL, UNITER, and the government of East Java. He he visited Western Amazon Rainforest University of Rondonia. FIMCA and Federal Rural University of Rio, Rio de Janeiro, founded by FIMCA and University of Rondonia. 
he has uh, samaj bandhu award 2020 for prantik care the earth gis mapping training institution institute santi niketan and emergent technologies itanagar arunachal pradesh best sorry bharat excellence award 2020 and india indian leading educational award by friendship forum of india new delhi he also has i 20 r distinguished research award 2018 from india australia international institute of organized research international best researcher award 2018 for the international american council for research and development awards 2018 iardo awards for young scientists 2018 provided by gurukul institute of engineering and technologies kota rajasthan affiliated to rtu and amp approved by the all india council of technical education new delhi international association of research and development organization under the banner of indian india educational charitable trust gaziabad india he also has award for excellence in research 2018 in third south asian education award 18 hyderabad by education expo tv he also has a national teachers excellence 2017 by international benevolent research foundation kolkata uh, he also has a pori base bondhu samuna from boragari junior high school barsik foundation day organizing committee and monobio seva mancha ngo kuch bihar national award for research on folk geography 2017 from organizing committee of national seminar of folk geography india west india yeah, also yeah. has sundarlal bihu gana nature conservation award 2006 by jawalpur management and uh, association south asia management association venue ait thailand he also has kabi and anil sarkar international award 2015 from Kavi Anil Sarkar Literature and Educational Study Center, uh, Kumila, Bangladesh. He also has uh, Uttar Pradesh Natya Jagat 31st Gunigan Sambardhan, Sambardhana 2013 by Uttar Banga Natya Jagat, Siliguri, West Bengal, India. He also has other uh, significant uh, work experience in the field of climate security works uh, like in 2020 he he was a member of board of people biodiversity registrar of raiganj municipality recruited by honorable district magistrate of uttar dinaspur through chairman of raiganj municipality in 2020 hand wash sanitation in raiganj municipality kaliaganj municipality and itahar police station were started to fight against Corona COVID-19. In 2019, Chodha Gram Municipality, Komila, Bangladesh has accepted the proposal on 1,000 trees plantation in one minute at their municipality area and planted it on 14 June 2019 to celebrate the World Environment Day 2019. In 2000. Uh, 19 accepted the SD planning like one PhD thesis submission equal to one tree plantation in the campus of Raigans University by the registrar of RGU. He was associated and uh, accepted the concept of Snehogar by Raigans municipality that is temporary breastfeeding room for the child in Raigans town during the time of Durga Puja festival. He was associated with Nandan Kanan project green roof in uh, urban culture on every anniversary of the married couple. No plastic water bottles in any academic seminars and conferences. He was associated with memory tree plantation in name of the East persons of family at the riverside village of Kolor River, uh, Chasi Utsav, organic farmer festival, conservation of indigenous rice varieties at Hatia village, symbolic, Ozone tree, 16 September, World Ozone Day as a birthday gift. Campaigning on the vote of uh, climate, vote for climate, we need climate leaders in social uh, media. He, he also has a, you know, 
sustainable captions on the travel handbags, indoor plant pots, and office plant pots. Different sustainable captions like vote for oxygen, environment is your not is your not nature, lit, life or biodiversity, we need climate leaders, etc. Uh, sustainable wedding, marriage trees, biva, uh, birikha, and marriage Rakhi Bandhan program. He is associated with Briksa Rakhi Bandhan, also associated with Teachers Tree Plantation in Teachers Day, uh, 100 Banyan and Pakur Tree Plantations. And two, uh, he is associated with the uh, tree and Anna Prasan Barikko, first rice ceremony tree. Campaigning on pond conservation on the day of birthday celebration, campaigning on uh, lockdown, lockdown for climate, use rainwater for building construction, use uh, rainwater for paint, uh, painting, rainwater was stored by a researcher and used to prepare his own house. Stop abusing drinking water from roadside taps under the caption, uh, my town, my responsibility, author is research scholars, team are always aware to stop abuse of water from any roadside taps. Uh, these, these are the important, uh, his um, main contributions, awards, and experiences. So this is uh, quite a gigantic task. Uh, thank you uh, so much once again. So now uh, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Tapas Paul for the session. Sir, you can continue. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Am I audible, uh, audience? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so I think uh, the whole biodiversity should be uh, concluded in a very few minutes. It is very required for us because. It is important to us the key work and the key thinking is important to us to save our society, civilization, and modern art. So, right now, I would like to share my own idea and my uh, experiences which I got during the time of my research, also uh, in the time of my supervision uh, for my research scholars. And the uh, uh, basic topic uh, is. Excuse me, doctor. Excuse me, doctor. Your voice is cracking. So it is. Yes, I also experienced so... the same. Yeah. yeah. Voice oh. is breaking. Yeah. Okay, okay just wait. Please. 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 Wait. Hello. Hello. Now it is clear, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, uh, the person who are unmuted, they are speaker. Please mute. Now the topic is algorithm detection system, penalties and consequences. Okay. Is it okay? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. That is the basic uh, problem which uh, we are following uh, of our uh, research. <laughs> research. That is the plagiarism. And uh, what is the basic problem uh, if you are finding the concept of plagiarism in your research? And how you can detect? that the scholar is followed the concept of paganism in his or her or the third gender's writing. And what should be the uh, penalties to reduce such type of obnoxious work by the researcher, even by the academicians in our academic world? At first, I would like to share what is the basic problem? What is the backdrop uh, of such type of emerging paganism systems? by us. Actually, the basic problem is uh, the responsibility. We are not responsible. Being a teacher, we are not responsible to generate that the mind of terrorism, the mind of our students. At first, we need to recheck our rethinking. We need to follow our responsibility 
our ethical activities, the value added thinking, and what is the what was the education system which was followed by us by our ancestors uh, in our education system. That, that, that was in modern education, the numbers, degrees, and promotions have become the main. I think Dr. Uh, A.R. Banerjee, please mute. It is making disturb to me that because, okay, thank you, sir. In modern education, the numbers, degrees, and promotions have become the major interest of education, right? We are far away from astronomic education. I am, I am feeling, uh, sir, please, the technical community of this seminar, please follow that, the situation, making the uh, peaceful condition. Please. We are far away from astronomic education, suburban education, and the Google education. Yes, that is, is, I have used these three terms right now. That is the astronomic education, still, till now, which is followed by the uh, Tagore's Shantiniketan, Vishwamharati University. And I have spent by 16 years educational uh, activities in this uh, university. That's why I know the importance of astronomic education. Emerge your ideas. And to be to be a responsible researcher, to be a responsible academician, that is very much important. That is uh, these three basic terms: that is astronomic education, topo education, and the Gurukul education. These all are our identity, the identity of our Indian education system. So, uh, whatever we are following, the formal education system based on our concrete. Uh, formal education environment, but we need to uh, follow also this type of astronomic education or Tapuvan education and the Guru education. We are far from this type of educational system, and this all this ensured three basic concepts can raise your mind based on your ethic, value, uh, your responsibility, and to adopt a sustainable mind to be a good researcher. We don't need just research. Really. We need a good practices and the research which will be fruitful for our country's development. Not to get only the doctor's degree. And also following huge number of published publications uh, without judging the quality of the research journals. Yes, that's type of problem. This is the basic problem that we have deviated from our uh, ancestor age old traditional educational systems. And personally, I have followed based on my 12 years of uh, research uh, activities in my life that there are many students and scholars, they are uh, habituated uh, the concept of uh, based on their on the concept of cryptomania. This concept, this term of cryptomania is not present uh, in the common peoples, but it is also present in our research scholar also. There are a lot of researchers I have followed that they are practicing the concept of cryptomania in their research work. Personally, I have observed such type of evidences. I observed that. And so that type of practices, that type of practices uh, are not ethically uh, good for the development of the mind of the research scholar. This is the development of the country. So at first, we need to reduce, we need to curtail the concept of cryptomania from our mind, from the mind of our uh, uh, research scholar. Here the concept of psychology is important, human psychology. This, this type of practicing is connected with the concept of human psychology. What is psychology? Psychology is equal to your mind plus your behavior. How you can uh, uh, behave? Your behavior is expressed by the, by the thinking of your mind. So your sustainable mind is important. Your sustainable behavior is important. Then you can be the combination of sustainable psychology. And this concept is applicable for our research scholar and for our academician both. Now, the Institutional Committee for Ethical Review of Projects, CIREP, which has uh, already generated, which had 
which had already generated on September 2014, and it was generated by the university that it is also called uh, called university. That is University Pom Pompey Cabre of Barcelona. We have already started research in this day. Just to imagine that we are passing, we are uh, celebrating research ethics day. Why we are celebrating such a, a, a day of celebration? That means we, we that such type of day of celebration is demanding by our contemporary education. That means we are not following the value in our research. We are not following the ethics in our research activities. We are not following the sustainable philosophy in our research writings. We are not following the concept of truth in our research writing. We are not conducting the proper research work, both by the research scholar, both by the supervisor also. Sometimes I may follow that. Research scholar just want to get degree. Sometimes I have already followed that. The supervisor wants to uh, complete the work uh, to, comp to, to, to present that there are a lot of researchers have completed this work under his or her supervision. And that is also connected to our CAS, 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 area advanced uh, of, of, our, of our increment. So the, the concept of cryptomania is followed both by the scholar and supervisor in some cases. And another thing in which I, I, I have mentioned here that is researching well, that is the caption. That is a researching way. Scotland's hard sector research forum of Scotland, which has always started this type of caption in the research work in their educational atmosphere, that we need to follow the researching way, quote unquote. So this type of relevance, this type of emerging captions are, are emerging, are saying to us that we need to follow the for research, we need to follow the well research. We need to follow the well-being and research. I will mention there are a lot of uh, emerging uh, emerging problems and issues, and how the people, how the scholars are following the noxious and the uh, what during the time of their research. I think I will mention there are a lot of lot of uh, websites are present. There are a lot of software uh, softwares are present in our research arena that uh, that is. Making it is making a, a problem for us to detect the plagiarism because uh, and another issue that what is the issue? The educational system of the contemporary world is demanding more quantity rather than quality of cases, right? Central and state governments have declared the cash area and first schemes, UGC regulation, dated 36, 2010, for the promotion of college and university teachers. That is the basic incentive, not to follow the direct, not to follow follow the ethical path of the research work. And here, the basic strategy is promotion. All we need is promotion. All we need is the money. All we need is the degrees. We are not following the proper ethical path to earn that promotion. Here are the best aspect of problems. Everybody knows it. But in most cases, they are avoiding such type of problems. Issues that academicians have become busy to fulfill, fulfilling the criteria. It is observed that some teachers are not interested to do it. They are always regularly, rather, the hand to mouth time they start to fulfill their criteria. And another thing I have realized that is the. Uh, sir, Please. sorry to interrupt you, sir. Your uh, voice is not uh, clearly coming. Okay. It's it's, it's uh, you know breaking every now and then. So kindly, so please look into it. Wait. Hello. I think is it okay? Is it okay? Sound okay? Yes, it's fine for me. Yeah. Sound okay? I think, is it okay? Yes, yes, it's fine, sir. It's good? Yes, it's good, sir. Okay, no problem. Okay. okay. What is the basic problem? What type of psychology is being practiced by our contemporary researchers and our practitioners in our educational field? We are passing through, uh, through the 
Kali Yuga. What is Kali Yuga? The age of darkness. If we people are passing through the age of darkness, means our mind is fulfilled by the uh, by the concept of darkness. Double publication causes the publisher or editor to publish in darkness. Lots of factors are in our search world, in our in our uh, publishing uh, environment. So what is what we need? We need the sustainable thinking. I have already promoted this concept that is sustainable thinking and the sustainable research. What is sustainable research? The sustainable research indicates the researcher who will follow the ethical path to do and to complete their research work to get to get their own research degree. So here, basic importance is importance uh, should be highlighted. That is the sustainable thinking is important during the time of their research work in field visit. Also during the time of their uh, research research uh, work, uh, complete their degree uh, as per the proper time. Here I have mentioned uh, another photo. You can uh, follow it. That is. Uh, the red color circle, large red color circle, and a small red color circle. Uh, what is the what is the basic differences here? That is that is uh, shown uh, here. I have followed one thing that is people are looking more to wealth rather than the retro. They are the large large uh, colored uh, circle indicates that is a resource. Okay, and and the small color uh, circle indicates is the portion of the wealth. We need more wealth rather than to nourish and flourish the more resource. We are very, we have become very greedy. So we are not thinking uh, about the differences between wealth and resources. We are not careful about to sustain our uh, resources. So that is the basic problem. It is, it is also connected with our Psychological uh, problem. Demand of the people has crossed the level of capacity of fulfilling. That's why that human psychology of modern people is going to be intended as greedy people. People are demanding degrees, whereas demand for knowledge has become degrees increasing. That is the basic problem, which I have already observed among the scholars. They just want uh, to be a doctor, but they have. No capacity and ability to, to, to become a doctor. That is not their problem. It is also the problem of our academicians, of our of the supervisors, because we are given the uh, arena to pass this type of to analyze this type of to cross over this type of scholars uh, to do the research. That means we are also responsible. The researchers are also responsible. This is the supervisor and the authority. Both are the responsible because we are given the space. Past such type of the greedy scholars. Nowadays, the concept of greediness has penetrated the educational sector. All we know that. So, greediness has become adopted in every section of our life, and the habit of kleptomania is practiced by the researchers. Most of the researchers are following cut and paste method, and to to restrict such type of cut and paste method, we have started to. Uh, apply the Kund or original uh, or some plagiarism taking software. Researchers are more clever. I will mention how they are uh, trying to remove such type of plagiarism in their research activities. Thus, change the synonym of the word of the sentences. It is the, it is the way to reduce the such type of plagiarism, which is practiced by many scholars and demanding only. Doctor degree. That is the basic problem uh, in our society, in our society, in all over the world. So, and again, translate the portion of the original language this article from a lot of, uh, of uh, the journals or the magazines which are not available in our website. How you can detect the plagiarism? The material which is available in our in our uh, website that would uh, could be the part of your plagiarism detection process. But there are a lot of uh, writings are present in our local area, which is published based on our region, which is our languages. These all are not in, included in the our website. 
our Google uh, Google developer. So how you can check if the scholar is getting information or copying information from that the regional based uh, language based uh, articles or news uh, newspaper or magazine. So that is the that is uh, also a part of our problem. Not and the scholars are not followed the proper methodology. That is also the part of the of our maintaining uh, unethical practicing. So don't do not visit the field. Yeah, another type of problem. Most of the scholars they don't want to visit the uh, field. They just want to complete their work based on their second day data, and uh, and and they want to be an outside geographer, right? They want to be an outside geographer. And I think if you are if you want to do the research in geography, or then you must uh, have to follow the field visit in educational sector. I have also done my research. This is that is education. So I believe that the, the secondary data based research is important, but that is important to find out to cover your research into a place to work. Here the field visit is important. 134 people are present in our in our uh, in our India thus, and 6.4 billion people uh, are present in our world, in our mother earth. So the human resource, the human induced areas are important. If lot of people are here, at least lot of lot of human resources are here, here, then you you have to use the human resource. And if you are not using that human resource, in that case, is the process is potentially emerging in many places. So another thing I, I have mentioned, I have highlighted this. Uh, a photo because to energize, energize your mind that don't prepare data from the home without visiting the field physically. It is very much important to, to product the past and research part. So past and research is very much important. Uh, if you are uh, following the field uh, based research work, that would be more good for your career. Personally, during the time of my PhD uh, in geography, I had covered 6,631 kilometers in West Bengal with the help of my uh, wife. And I, I have used my own DRF and SRF uh, fellowship. Personally, I have observed that there are now nowadays there are a lot of students are getting DRF and SRF, but they are not using that money, that fellowship to do the research better. But they are uh, storing their money in the bank, and, and at the end of the of the, their research, they are earning, they are uh, buying the land or car or some wealth. Whether government uh, is giving such type of money to earn your to increase your wealth, rather to increase your research work as a part of the of, of the resource of the nation, government is giving a number of research uh, scholarship and fellowship to support the research, but research. Uh, researchers are not using that money in research properly, buying land or buying or property, right? I have a lot of examples I can I can give you, but right now I will not provide the mention the name of scholars, but that is the basic problem. So the malpracticing factors which I, I have already followed: intellectual dishonesty, scientific misconduct, re redundant publications, misinterpretation of data, research. Integrated FFP paid publication in own journals and to reduce such type of malpractices factors in our research work. UTC has started a mandatory report on 2019. That is the research ethics. The course, the name of the course is research ethics for all the PhD researchers and which will be conducted for 30 hours in connection of to credit system. The paid journal list, which is also followed uh, by all of you, I think, which is uh, presenting in uh, UGC uh, website to mention the clone, name of the clone journals. And what is good research? The good research follows the professionalism of the researchers, data protection, the concept of being researchers, well-being of the art, doing research for the society, nations, the research, for nation, following the ethical path to complete the research. This all should be followed in good research. And I have also mentioned and highlighted the clone journals, which this all clone list of clone journals are present in the UGC 
website. You can also find out this all when, whenever you would like to start in the Google. And there are now mentioning the ways, the ways, the unethical practices which is followed by researchers and contemporary researchers. Number one, inserting unique white text, which is called mass plagiarism. You just followed. How you can find out? You just followed. Here I have mentioned piece of text. And you would like to uh, reduce the plagiarism uh, of that of that catchy word that is piece of cake. How you can uh, reduce that type of plagiarism? Uh, you just uh, type. At first you type P, then you give space, then you type I, then you give space. In this way you can you can enter in a white text. In this way you can if you are inserting unique white text and you can. Reduce that algorithm in your research work. And later substitution. Later substitution concept uh, is also present uh, in the fake uh, writing, in different value writing. That is, if the name if the name is A, B, C, D, E, F, then in place of D, you will change the letter, you will type A. In the place of B, you will type B. That means in this way, you are changing the uh, letters of those sentences, sentences, and then the plagiarism will be reduced in this way. There are a lot of websites that are uh, present in our uh, Google. For example, www.duplicatechecker.com. You can reduce the plagiarism of your research work through the passing of through, through the uh, uh, reinserting, inserting people and the changing the words. To suit through such type of duplicate takers.com. I am also mentioning a lot of rewriting software. These all of the article rewriter in internet, in website, in www. Uh, uh, dunia. You can find out another website, another site that is rewritingguru.com, co.magnify.com, and these all are the uh, are the article rewriter uh, online system to this. You can reduce the plagiarism of your writings, but these all are the unethical activities by the researchers. Another uh, example that is smallpo2.com. If you are, if you would like to rewrite your uh, uh, plagiarized work, you just paste your work here, and software automatically will change the, the plagiarism rate of the plagiarism of the paper. And another site. Which can, which is uh, helping uh, to, to our unethical practices, that is pposteo.com. Another site I would like to uh, example that is the fake references. There are many articles I have, I have observed that scholars are not uh, mentioning the proper references, but they are uh, making the copy and, uh, copy and paste method. Use, they are using the copy and uh, paste method to write down their uh, research work. But they are mentioning some different irrelevant uh, references in their uh, bibliography section or references section. That is also that would be identified as uh, as a fake references. It is also the also a problem for us, for our researchers, for our com contemporary researchers, publishers who do not collect any proper copyright and declaration from the authors. That type of problems problem is also associated uh, with our contemporary researchers. Artificial intelligence based plagiarism remover tools. This type of plagiarism remover tools are present in our in our research world, in our WWW dunia. And I am I am I am mentioning the uh, the, the plagiarism remover rewriting tools uh, or the site that is Sujoy Dhar site. You just put this Sujoy Dhar site. I will give uh, the link of that Sujoy Dhar site. That's why next slide. Hostarina.com, Codel Duck, Propestio. Add CO tools and such type of article rewriting uh, software is present to free the plagiarism of your research articles. This is our contemporary issues that we are following such type of unethical practices to complete our research work. Have you heard uh, that a colony present in Indropostro of New Delhi? Where the ready made PhD thesis is being sold by in exchange uh, through, uh, through the exchange of 50 
thousand Kuang Nakutis. You can find out such type of uh, video is present in YouTube. That that really let is told in our India. Such type of uh, spot is present in New Delhi. You just put that news and you can find out through the surfing of the YouTube. Text laundering. You know that money laundering is present in our society. Such type of money, such type of text laundering is present in our society. I will give the example. Just wait. This is the site that is Sujoy uh, in dot, dot in, which is also the article rewriting rewrite software. And there are a lot of researchers are following such type of uh, it is also called antisocial activity fighting, I think. Because it's because if, uh, if the researcher is not following the ethical practicing, then the researcher is not uh, uh, should not be called as a good researcher. They are doing some antisocial activities in uh, academic world, academic world also. And another site, paypostio.com, uh, that is the, also the article realize realize software. You can reduce your uh, article plagiarism to, to the using such type of uh, unethical software also. So what should be the uh, should be my recommendation and what should be the ethical guidelines for all of our dear audience and the scholars? Only? You should follow some uh, captions, some uh, catchy words in the time of your research work. That is, transparency is important uh, to complete your research work. Consent is important, honesty is important, privacy, value, dignity, regulation, confidentiality, responsibility, all these are the important term and how how your research will be identified by the others as a part of sustainable research if you are following the proper acknowledgement if you are following the proper declaration plagiarism rate proper references proper bibliography a uh, proper photo sources and mentioning proper photo sources must be in, include the proper web sources then the sdg goal Sustainable Development Goal of United Nations SDG 4, that is quality education, will be fulfilled. All we need quality education. We are, we are uh, hearing our demand that we need quality education, quality education. United, United Nations want to, wants to highlight the quality education, but you are not applying the, the, the SDG 4 in your research work. Nobody are follow, following uh, the, no, the such type of uh, that has the importance of this SDG 4. The quality education is important, but we are not following the quality path. We are not following the quality mind. That's why I have mentioned this logo also because it is important. That the United Nations has given uh, 2030 agenda. All you know, I think that United Nations nations has given uh, SDG four uh, as well as total number of SDG that is 17. And here the quality education is important. If you are not following the uh, sustainable research. If we are not following the uh, plagiarism for research one, then how we can uh, uh, success the goal of SDG 4 of United Nations? And, but uh, uh, one university has already started a step of practicing research and publication ethics. I think uh, the, the contemporary researchers all, they need to uh, pass through the examination of, of one paper that is research, RPG, research and publication ethics. And in 2011, this course was already started in uh, Yanofa University of Bangalore, uh, India. That is MSc in Research Ethics. Uh, that is the good news for us. And uh, these all are, are, are my recommendations that should be followed by every researcher. That is, algorithm test is important. Declaration page is important in your research work. Acknowledgement page is important. Referencing is important. Peer review, blind review, ethics of publishers authorship, royalty, intellectual property rights, copyright method, best practices, open access in research publications, open access publication, journal finder, Sherpa or Romeo, such type of online uh, resource, open access journal site, ethical software, database and research metrics, indexing, proper indexing, citation, impact factors, metrics, all are the uh, sustainable uh, points to success your Based research practice and 2020 top related algorithm checker software. I would like to mention some examples that is Pro Writing Aid, Grammarly, Qtext, White Smoke, Copy Space, Paper Paper Reader. 
these are the uh, this uh, speech uh, uh, software mechanism checking paper software of 2010 that I have mentioned. But, but apart from that, there are a lot of uh, plagiarism checker software are present. Uh, but which is uh, which is followed by the UGC? That is the basic part. What should be followed? What what, what uh, software is important to us? Which should be legal and ethical? This uh, six mentioned six uh, uh, plagiarism checker software are. Are, are also a ethical practicing for us, but uh, this Swedish uh, software that is Urkund, UGC has recommended uh, this Urkund software since 2019. And uh, what is the, which one is better for us, whether Urkund or Tartitin? Tartitin is regularly used for courses, both for undergraduate and graduate. This is legal, legal, legal uh, software, a plagiarism checker software that is the Tartitin. But this is, it should be followed by the uh, UG and PG level for, um, uh, students. But if you are a researcher, if you are an MPL or PhD researcher, you should follow the original mechanism uh, um, checker software, or which is also called the Udkun, because previously it was known as Udkun, but right rightly it is intended for persons who create research documents. But so for uh, the university scholars, for the scholars of the uh, PhD scholar or MP scholars of different universities, you should follow uh, original or useful software. What should be your penalties if you are not if you are not following the ethical practicing or ethical paths during the time of your research? UGC has given such penalties penalties uh, list as per the UGC white letter number two dot four dot f point one eighteen oblique two thousand ten PPT two letter six August 2018, five, five, 530 meeting of UGC. In the time of this meeting, as per this reference number or letter number, they have made a lot of uh, 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 section of category of the penalty. If you are, if you are, if your uh, research work is up uh, to 10% plagiarism, then you don't, uh, you will not be uh, punished by any penalty. But if your research work is a bagger, then you need to revision of script within six months. And this type of if your plagiarism is more than 60 percent, then your registration will be cancelled. This type of plagiarism is uh, and the plagiar, uh, penalty is not uh, applied for only applied for the scholars, but it should it should be it must be applied for our. Uh, I'm really sorry. So that is the last sorry, slide. Winter. That is the last slide. I think the Karma Norbu, Norbu, I think you are saying. Uh, sir, sir, due to the paucity of time, I, mean, I have already. You have, please unmute. No, sir, you have already Karma exceeded Norbu, the. Norbu, sir? <laughs> Sir, you have oh, already exceeded the time limit. And would you like to say something, like, sir? Uh, can you please continue? Sorry? Okay, that is the suggestion. Oh, yeah. That is the. That is the basic suggestions uh, I would like to share here. That is, stop any type of cut test method, incorporate detailed acknowledgement, put proper declaration, get plagiarism before publishing the research and must do it to proper institutions and universities. Try to reduce any type of biasness during the collection of field data. Before the publication of the research portion, researchers should take proper permission from the supervisor and university also. Use scholarship. For research work rather than invest in another purpose because the government allocated this type of scholarship for better research. So, the final importance, the final connection of your plagiarism free work with the sustainable development goal number three that is good health and well being. Here, well being, the term well being is also connected with your research work. If you want to success, if you want to see the well-being in your researcher, then you must have to follow the caption of the researcher. So the life of the nation and the community depends on the ethical practice of the researchers and academicians. Thank you very much for all the my audience and uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Eunice Shukpa and uh, my beloved friend. Dr. Nicole from Romania and uh, also Dr. Nosebuna Dorin from the, uh, Ukraine and uh, also the principal star and the coordinator of uh, the conference, conference also. Thank you. Uh,
uh, to uh, the college authority and my research scholars. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tapaspal. Extremely sorry because of the time constraint, we couldn't hear you. We could have, you know, extended some time, but unfortunately, it is already late. We will definitely going to organize a talk, especially for your, I mean, theme that is sustainable thinking uh, in the days to come. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul. Uh, Ma'am, uh, can I see something? <clears throat> yes, sure. So now we have come to an end of this amazing webinar and I hope all the audience enjoyed the webinar as much as I enjoyed moderating it for you guys. Thank you, Dr. Yunus for making me a part of this amazing webinar. Once again, I'd like to thank all the speakers for taking time out of the busy schedule and providing us with the wonderful insights. And lastly, to present the vote of thanks, I would like to invite Dr. Sita Chhatri. But before this, uh, I would request all the audience to kindly turn on the camera for the photo session. Mm -hmm. So I would request all the audience to kindly turn on the camera for a photo session. How are likewise, you uh, likewise, the audience also requested to fill the... Dr. Nikolai, how are you, please? Dear okay. Nikolai and Doreen. So the audience also requested to fill the feedback form. The link of the same has been provided in the chat box. So kindly fill the feedback form for the e-certificate. Darin, hi. Please start our camera, sir. Our video. Please start our video. And, uh, Dr. Yunus Subba, ma'am, can you please take the screenshot of this? Uh... Please start our video, sir. <laughs> Request to organize committee. Please start our video. Okay. So the ma'am, the doctor, uh, doctor Yunisaba, can you please, uh, ma'am, check the problem? What's going on, ma'am? And they are saying they are not able to uh, turn on the camera. We're really sorry for this. So can we meet for one minute, please? Yeah. Start. Yes, ma'am. So, ma'am, you can take the screenshot of this. Uh... Thank you all. Thank you so much. Oh, I'd like to invite Dr. Gita Chetri for the word of thanks. Uh, this is a wonderful lecture series. Thank you is such a prayer that cannot be seen or touched. It must be felt by heart. I feel honored and privileged to get the opportunity to purpose a vote of thanks on this occasion. On behalf of the organizing committee, I convey deep regards and hearty thanks to our honorable chief patron, Mrs. Hondola Galson, special secretary, come director, higher and technical education, education department, government of Sikkim. I would like to thank our patron, Mr. Bidhan Subha, principal, Sikkim Government College, Renok, Sikkim. I take this opportunity <clears throat> to thank uh, to extend our most sincere thanks to our guest delegates, Dr. Doreen Lozovano, Dr. Nikolit uh, Vasilkos, G, Dr. Vinay Kumar, Dr. Tapas Paul, 
for their beautiful presence, raised us with their kind words and contribution to this international webinar, a great success. Thank you once again. I would like to thank our convener, Dr. Yunus Subba, for organizing this program and to all the coordinators, reporters, participants, non-teaching staff members who always stand by us and motivate us. Thank you everyone for taking, uh, everyone for taking this time to be here today. A very good evening once again and thank you. Aju. Okay. Dr. Thakwes, uh, some of the participants are asking for your <laughs> mobile number. If you could please provide us with that. Thank you, Dr. Thakwes. on mute. My humble thanks to Dr. Dorin and Dr. Nicole because uh, for both of your participation were important for today's success. We are very much happy and I'm also waiting both of both for you to provide my accommodation, hospitality, and to uh, share the Indian cuisine. Uh, I personally want to thank uh, Dr. Nicole and Dr. Doreen uh, for joining us uh, for such a, I mean, noble cause, I would say. And this is for the first time that our college is organizing an international webinar. <clears throat> Let's see in future, we would uh, like to, you know, meet you personally and we'd like to invite you to a small college. It's a very small college and it's a boarding college. Um, it, it, it has started uh, in 2005, I think, because recently I've uh, been transferred to this place. So it's a rural college actually, and we have a very small campus, but we have a very enthusiastic and <clears throat> you know young minds in our college. So we will be very happy if you could you know manage to come to our college for your you know uh, knowledge sharing sessions. Thank you so much, and let's be keep in touch. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tapas. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ki bolu, ke? Aami... Aami... <laughs> Na, Na, bole. Uh, uh, aami aami encourage kore chen. Ba jeta aami aami amar kache aami Jotota um, expectations rekhechen, our apni joto help amake assistance dechen. Thank you so much. Uh, ami agami ye te bully dechen. Ami shoti te ekdam from my bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Apni chilen bole at a webinar uh, holo, shambhab holo. Thank you so much, Dr. Kapa. Ami a fitu bite more jar dos bachar pujon to amar presence of inertia thakre. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Tapos. I'll okay. uh, keep in Bye. touch with you. Thank you so much and good okay. night.
Dr. Doreen, thank you so much. And uh, um, uh, I wish uh, your daughter, uh, I, I, I will pray for your daughter, quick recovery. Thank you so much. Despite of all the problems you, you know, uh, you joined uh, our program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, for our good friend, Dr. Tapas Pal, who make links all over the world. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, in the future also find opportunity to, to do some uh, seminars, uh, not only online, but also offline yeah. and uh, meet in, in Sikkim, in Moldova, in any places to... to uh, discuss different interesting uh, research subjects and success to all your activity and greetings to all, all the colleagues from Sikkim and all, all India. I hope uh, we will continue with different topics and cooperation. Also, you have my invitation for publications in, uh, in our countries. So, uh, Everything is possible, even the distance it's a uh, uh, little bit uh, separated us, but it's not a problem if the wish it's a real one. Yeah, take care. All the best to everybody. You too. Thank you. And thank you, thank you. all the reporters, uh, the host, Karma Sir. Thank you so much uh, for your commitment towards uh, the work. And it's really appreciated. Uh, thank you all the participants. Thank you reporters. Thank you all the faculties. Thank you. Good night and um, take care. Bye-bye.